families and you know and even some of the kids here we've had them talk about the buddies that they've had um, the Smyrna, the three Smyrna boys, you know, Evan and, and Truck, you know, and Brian, who did a great job with their buddy, talked about what they did and, and the experiences they had. So the boys are learning that it, there's more things out there and they should be aware of the kind of everybody. You were an assistant coach a couple of years ago. What's been the difference for you, the major difference, uh, being the head guy this year? Since then you come and you get, you know, you get to meet all the kids and you have fun, right? You just coach and coach head guy. Everything's organized and everything's here. And it's just the message that you have to send, right? You're Sending the message to being the face of the bull and representing the South. And I'm taking pride in the fact that you know, we're from Apple Quinnemick and everybody you knows below the ditch, right? Below the ditch and the bridge that makes the South. But some of the Southern guys don't look at us as South. You know, we're, we're Newcastle County. So, you know, making a point in, in incorporating from Delmar and Laurel all the way up and having the St. George's kids. And we're a Southern team. And that's been part of what I try to do as a coach. It's been a little different. Like, we get to the guys, but I've been making sure that we. We have that south blow. We're doing this interview on Wednesday morning after your morning practice. You're going to head down to Milford to scrimmage tonight. How do you feel about your team literally halfway through this week-long training camp? Well, one thing when you have a team, you don't know how they're going to gel, how they're going to match, how they're going to you know, play together. And we have not had a single altercation. We have not had a single situation in practice where we've had to pull people off and They've gone hard. You know, we've, we've gone hard. Kids are coming off edge and making plays, and they're just picking each other up. So they, they've bonded, and that's part of it. Living in the dorm, they've bonded. Um, I really like us up front. You know, we are, we are pretty solid up the middle. Um, Evan Dyer from Smyrna, he's, he's a football player. Uh, I think our strength coming into this game will be our linebacking core. Um, our back half on defense can fly around. We know the Blues got some skills, and they're going to try to power up. And, you know, they're six nine quarterbacks, <laughs> Albero and Tattersall. But, you know, our linebacking core with Chris Shields from Sussex Central um, and then Driver, Seven Driver, and, you know, Drew Beckford from Middletown. I think they can control it and their energy. And the one thing when you play a game like this, everybody comes from a different system. So you put stuff in, and, and Coach Quillen from Seaford is around our defense. And from the start, he said something. They're flying around and they're communicating from day one. And Chris Shields has really taken the lead on that. I know you probably have a lot you need to get out of tonight's scrimmage. What is, do you think is the primary thing that you and the coaches this afternoon are going to look at as to, hey, guys, we need to get this fixed might be the wrong term, but we need to work on this since it is our only scrimmage okay. before the game on Friday night. So we're going to do some heavy live special teams tonight at the scrimmage because, you know, that's something we can't forget about. We've put them all in and we've done it on air and there's things. Um, the one thing that we need to make sure that we work on, it's situational football, you know, and that, that's where it is. And when the light's going, even though we're in the summer, the lights aren't going to go on. You know, can we hit the certain plays that we have to hit that we've had a week long? If not a week long, we've had three days of practice, so it's not much. But, you know, we're going to be checking off the ones that are working tonight and the ones that aren't, and it's going to be a quick pull. That one's not working. We, we can't go with that on Friday night. So just kind of cleaning up all of our plays and making sure we know what we have for Friday. You've been watching this game for decades, and you've been a coach, uh, an assistant coach. Tonight, or Friday night, I should say, you'll walk off this field for the first time as a head coach. Uh, win or lose, what do you hope your players walk off this field with? One, I hope even back when they had the, their buddies in the hand-in-hand -hand all year, that they walk off with a sense of they played for something greater. Two, I hope they walk off with, it was a week. I mean, they're giving up, they're giving up summer. Right. They're giving up summer, that first two weeks of summer, and, and some of them have jobs, had to give up money, um, friends and all that. So that they had an enjoyable week. The week was worth it for them, not just football-wise, but Gold the relationships the they made and that they know that I'm going to always be there for them because I've made 36 new, new football friends. And thirdly, you know, that we put on, Something to be proud of for the state. No, they're not the the it doesn't matter, but just to showcase the talent that we have. And sometimes, you know, with that small state, Delaware gets overlooked, but this is a chance that we can showcase from. <laughs> well, you've given up your week as well as yes. the other coaches have, and so we appreciate that so much. Uh, best of luck to you. Enjoy the rest of the week, and we'll see you Friday night. Thank you. You're listening to the broadcast of the annual Blue Gold All Star football game.
Delaware in June. John Busby along with Bill Harmon here at Newark in Newark, Delaware, at Delaware Stadium for the 2023 DFRC Blue Gold All-Star Football Game. Blue has won the toss, and they have chosen to receive, and it's going to be Noah Crisilla kicking off for the Gold Squad from Middletown. There are three folks back on the Blue Squad ready to receive as we're getting ready to start just a few minutes before 7 o'clock. The kick is away. And it bounces at the 20-yard line, fielded there by Anthony Sidbury. And he gets brought down at the 37-yard line. And so Blue will take over the starters for the Blue offense. At quarterback is Chris Elbaro. Running backs, Kasim Benson and Marquis Ellerby. Wide receivers, Lennox Preston, Jaden Smith, and Hudson Zwakis. Tight end is Jack Hebert, excuse me, tackles Jack Hebert. Guards are Nate Morda and Matt Lazier. Center is Phil Crock, and the other tackle is Marcus Barkley. Uh, Burrow in the shotgun formation. Snap is back. He looks out to his right, lofts it up in the air, and incomplete. He was trying to hit Lennox Preston in on the play for the gold was number two, uh, P.J. Henry. And Bill, that was a big hit to start off this 67th actual game. Well, Chris Albero was trying to throw a little bit of a wheel route. And the ball just hung in the air a little bit and allowed the safety to work downhill to it. Uh, this blue offense is going to be very explosive. You, Jody Russell, the head coach, wanted the ball to start with, so he wins the toss. Typically, teams defer. He wants the ball. It's an all-star game and an attack. And I think you're going to see him be very aggressive with his play call. And Darren Brody, the offensive coordinator for Newark, is calling the plays here today. Uh, Burrow hands it off there to Crossing Benton of St. Elizabeth. He's brought down after a gain of two. The 3-4 defense for the goal. The front three are Khalif Spencer, Braden Heron, and Jaden Manigault. Linebackers Ty Sean Milligan, Christopher Shields, Stephen Driver, and Drew Beckford. And in the backfield, Patrick Henry, LT Messick, Gavin Tucker, and Seatrick Jones. By, Stones. by rule, they have to play these defenses. Their alignments will get a chance to talk about. There's no stacking. There's no blitzing. And you can't press out on the perimeter. Man in motion left to right. Alboro drops back on third and long. Finds it. And now it's intercepted. Intercepted by Christopher Shields. And he's going to run it back to the 24. Brought down by number 21, Marquis Ellerby. And so not the start. Blue was looking for it. Goal takes over on the blue 24-yard line. Oh, what a terrific read of the eyes. And that's what you train your linebackers, safeties, and corners to do. Quarterback drops, you, you start to drop as he drops when he levels out, you level out, you break on the ball if you read the eyes, and that was just a uh, throw that Chris Albert would like to have back. It was a really excellent defensive play in the right spot at the right time, giving the goal some terrific field position here early in the game. In at quarterback, it looks like it's going to be Caden Shockley from Laurel High School, two-time defending state champions. Shockley, two guys in the backfield. He hands it off and dragged down immediately. That was Michael Pearson. And in on the tackle was Nate Ray from Silesiana. Nate Ray, of course, his brother Matt, the blue buddy for this all-star game. So a good start for the blue defense. Well, that's no big surprise to me to see Nate Ray in their backfield. The <laughs> Silesiana is so proud of this young man. Uh, he is explosive off the edge. He can play DM, but also in this game, they've moved him in to D-tackle. So now he's got a matchup that's even more advantageous. Look for him to be a problem for the goal in their backfield. He's got a great get off, one of the terrific stances in the game. And he's hoping to play here at the University of Delaware. So the first of what should be many games for him. Shockley drops back, flares the ball out, has his man, that's Ryan. Mejia, but he is tackled on the play by Damian Wright. Pickup of a few, but still going to bring up a third and 12. Shockley, who's known as a better runner than a passer, has a really quick release, a short drop. He has really nice footwork. He's known as a runner, as I mentioned, in that option attack that uh, took all of the state championship. But to look for him to throw some short passes. A good job by the blue team to run to the football. Shotgun formation for Shockley, drops back, looks over to his left, and is that a catch? If so, it's a good one, and that's Priscilla. Catch is made, defended there by Cadrero Barrett, but Priscilla with a great catch on his first reception of the day. Well, that was a great timing route by Shockley, throwing a comeback route out here to the left. Priscilla 
who, as I mentioned in the pregame show, a really good route runner. How good was that? He was right at the stakes as he made his break. That's a really smart play by Noah Casella from Middletown. Going to bring up a first down and 10 from the 13-yard line. So Gold knocking on the door here after the interception by Shields on Blue's first possession. And the handoff is made up the middle. That's Michael Pearson, and he's going to pick up about three yards before being tackled by a slew of Blue jerseys. When you have players like Ray and others, Benson, who like to get up field in the line of scrimmage, look for the goal team to utilize some trapping. That was a really nice block there by the right tackle, Ogden, on his pull to yield that good run on first down up the middle. And when you have a big player like Sample in the background, he's going to act sometimes almost as an illusion, and they will be looking for him more often, look for the other back to get the ball. Give is to Pearson. Pearson's going to be dragged down there by Nate Ray. Not the first time we've called his number, nor will it be the last. Pick up about a couple, going to bring up a third and five. And, Bill, you have to wonder if this is two-down territory for the goal team. Well, I would think so. You have so little time during the week, John, to get all your special teams integrated in and be able to actually practice them. Now, there are some special rules for special teams. I'm not sure if the coaches have agreed. If you were to try to kick a field goal, is there a full rush? Have they had a chance to institute that? But I'm looking for really this to be a four-down territory. Two men in the backfield, one to the right of Shockley, the other one right behind him. Shockley drops back, finds his man, but he's tackled immediately. That's Amir Jenkins on the catch, brought down by Cadrero Barrett from Howard High School, and that's going to bring up a fourth and two, and we'll see, Bill, whether that was a two-down territory or not. Howard's known for their prolific offense, but I'll tell you what, they've got some really good defenders. Barrett was in great coverage there and tight man-to-man, -man, did a great job of breaking on the ball and securing the tackle just short of the first down. So Danny Ritter who's known for his offense, and he had a great quarterback, and O.J. Matthews. Also, they play some pretty darn good defense as well. All right, and Gold is going to take a quick timeout. They had trouble getting to play, which you kind of expect. They've only had about five days of practice. We'll take it with them. This is the Blue Bowl All-Star football game. No score, but Gold knocking on the door. Keeper on fourth and three, taken down at the line of scrimmage, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. Blue will take over at its own 10-yard line. John Busby along with Bill Harmon here. No score, 7.30 left in the first quarter. The annual Blue Gold All-Star football game, a Delaware tradition unlike any other as Blue comes up to the huddle. Chris Albaro, the quarterback for the Blue team, of course played just, just about every position, it seemed, at Archmere. He hands off around to the right. That's going to be T.J. Martin, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds there by the goal. On the tackle there was Christopher Shields. He, of course, had the interception that set up gold up for that fourth down opportunity. That was an empty formation, and no one in the backfield other than the quarterback, Albero. T.J. Martin comes in speed sweep motion, runs it to the left where they had trips. Uh, this is a young man that missed his junior year due to injury. He's going to Louisville to play football. Martin is a terrific performer, really difficult to tackle in close quarters and in space. And on that last fourth down play, DeFeo Watts from DMA had a great run through to make that 
tackle of Shockley short of the first down. Now uh, Burrow in shotgun formation. Martin on his right hip in motion from right to left is Lennox Preston. Uh, Burrow's going to keep it, work his way up through the middle before he's tackled by Jaden Manigal. Close to the first down. He's actually going to have a first down, so nice first down run there by Alberto. When you prepare a ga defensive game plan against Archman, John Belais does a great job of that program or that offense. Not only do you have to worry about the passing of Alberto, and he's got some really good receivers, but also his run game. That was a really nice call by Darren Brody, the offensive coordinator of the blue team. They run a little counteraction off speed sweep. They pull the backside guard through the hole, and Albero finds his way. And I'll tell you what, he's only 185, but he's a very tough runner to bring down. First and 10 on their own 21-yard line. Blue moving left to right as we see it. Albero trying to hard count. Didn't fool anybody on the goal team. Flares it out to the left. That's Lennox Preston. On the carry, brought down by Gold. I believe that was number 10, LT Messick. And it's going to bring up a second down, no gain on the play. The Messick was there as well as Drew Beckford from Middletown. Uh, these guys really have a great feel for running into space, being able to bring themselves under control and make these tackles in the open field. That was excellent timing from an offensive standpoint and a really good open field tackle by the goal. I want to thank today's officials all donating their time. Bob Hudson, Elmore Smith, Bill Nichols, Don Ben, John Patterson, Antonio Thompson, Rick Jezik, Tom Kazmarczyk, Jim Kirkpatrick, Rodney Smith, Adam Barbas, Glenn Crowther, Eric Evans, Andrew Holtz, Garrett Kazmarczyk, and Jim Donato, all from the Northern Delaware Football Officials Association. President is Bob Collins. Thanks to him for helping put this together. As Albero is tackled, in the backfield, so that is a sack for Khalif Spencer from Lake Forest High School, and that's going to bring up a third and long. Looks like third and 21. Spencer is one of these two-way players down at Lake Forest who is really impactful in games. He gets a great get-off off the line of scrimmage. He just beat the left tackle there with a whip-and-run move and was able to corral Alberto. He had a chance to escape the pocket, so some really good defensive plays early on by the goal. Spot the ball now, so it's third and 18. So they spotted it where Albaro started the takedown, or was starting to be taken down. Shotgun formation, as it's been all night. Albaro flares it out, finds his receiver. That's Jaden Smith with the catch. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, knocked out of bounds by Patrick Henry from Sussex Central High School, and that's going to bring up our first punt of the day as the blue team special team trots on the field. And that was excellent timing between Albaro and Smith, the wide receiver from Newark. I ran a, a deep out pattern, but the goal team perfectly played that. They were going to give up nothing deep, keep everything in front of you, make the tackle. About uh, six yards, six and a half yards short. Blue comes into punt. Robbie Tattersall, a friend school, will be doing the punting. Patrick Henry back deep on his own 40 to receive. Robbie Tattersall, of course, going to go to Yale next year and slated to play tight end. And as I mentioned to you, Bill, uh, before the game, bigger than I thought he was. And a great tackle there. That tackle by Cadrero Barrett back on Patrick Henry, unable to get anywhere. Ball skipped by him, he picked it up, and before he knew it, he was on the ground. So Gold is gonna take over on their own 32-yard line. Got an injury on the field. Not sure who that is. He's in a perfect position where we can't see his number. While they're tending to him, I'll go through the starters for the Gold offense that will be on the field when we get back in action. Quarterback will be Caden Shockley. Running back, Michael Pearson. Fullback, Jaron Sample. The split ends are Noah Crisilla and Seth McGordy. Slot, Amir Jenkins. And then the offensive line, Thomas Gibbs, Ian Betty, Evan Brower, Wyatt Hellens, and Stephen Ogden. For the blue defense, it's going to be Nate Ray. On the defensive end, nose guard will be Aiden Boston. Ismail Dobson will be the other defensive end. The linebacking crew, Robbie Tattersall, Anthony Holloway, Dafir Watts, and Karrion Udovich. And then in the secondary, Damian Wright, Carterell Barrett, Tanai Martin, and Anthony Sidbury. Those are your starters on the blue defense. Bill, were you able to get a check as to who that might be? They surrounded by I people have not before. What I was going to remark is that sometimes uh, your punter if he gets the ball off quickly, and Robbie Tattersall did a nice job there, Nate Mortar was the long snapper. Even though that may have not been the best looking long spiral, it worked out that was almost 50 yards with a 3.1 hang time. So Robbie Tattersall doing a nice job there of switching the field for the blue team. 
And the injured player is number 23, Christopher Shields from Sussex Central High School, gets up and goes off on his own power with a jog. So good to see that. Hopefully we'll see him get back into the game. Blue leads this series 33-30. to 30. Blue won last year's game 26-13, to 13, snapping Gold's four-game win streak. There have been three ties in the game, but none since 1987. So Blue... Gold, excuse me, is going to take over on their own 32-yard line. Donovan Brooks is going to be, looks like he's going to be in at quarterback. And number 22, Michael Pearson, will be lined up on his left hip. Three wide receivers out to the right, one to the left. Gold moving right to left as we see it. Brooks drops back. The lefty throws it up in the air and almost picked off there. There were more blue defenders than there were receivers trying to get it out there to Jaden Manigault. Donovan Brooks is a lefty. He operates from the pocket extremely well. John Wilson uh, did a great job of coaching this young man up for the last two years as his starter. That time there was some tremendous pressure from Nate Ray coming in from his right defensive tackle position. He actually was double teamed and was still able to fight through. He flushed Brooks out to, the, to his left, and then he was forced to throw the ball a little bit high and a little bit early. A two-year starter, Brooks ended up with over 1,500 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards. A great baseball player, going to play baseball at Newman College next year. He's in the shotgun second and 10. Fakes the handoff, takes it himself up the middle, brought down after a pickup of a few yards. That's Nate Ray again. I think that's the third time we've called his name on the tackle there. So that's going to bring up a third down and looks like about six for the Gold Squad. We run a little zone read there. and Donovan Brooks read it perfectly. He cuts back, but Ishmael Dobson from Wilmington Friends School did a great job of being disciplined on the backside of that run and was able to start the tackle that Nate Ray finished up. So that's going to bring up a third and six on the 36-yard line. Brooks in the shotgun formation, three wide receivers out to the left. The ball set up exactly in the middle of the hash marks. Pressure gets the ball out, and a nice move there by Amir Jenkins. Gets around before he's knocked out of bounds there by Anthony Sidbury. But picked up enough for the first down, so a nice throw and catch there under pressure for the gold offense. Donovan Brooks did a great job of holding up. That was a five-man pressure from the blue, and he had two blue defenders in his face, and he somehow found Jenkins out in the left flat, who made a nice move after the missed tackle to get the necessary yardage for the first down. An excellent play by Brooks, hanging in there against pressure. First down on the 43-yard line. John Busby along with Bill Harmon. You're listening to the annual Blue Gold All-Star football game here at Delaware Stadium. Really a perfect weather night, about 74 degrees, no wind, a little cloudy, Chance of some storms moving through, but we'll wait and see if that happens. Handoff up the middle, no good there. Brought down by Jeffrey McNulty. The carry was by L.T. Messick from Cape Henlopen. Had a quick opening, but it was shut down quickly by the blue defense. By rule, you cannot blitz, but Jeff McNulty did a terrific job of reading the guard pulling, and then he filled, it, filled in right behind him and made the tackle in the backfield. That was an outstanding read by the... Concord linebacker. Brings up a second down, loss of two, second down and 12 for the gold. Brooks in the shotgun formation. Pearson to his left. Rolls out, flares it out. Catch is made, but knocked out of bounds. Amir Jenkins on the catch. And a late flag, I think. Is that a flag or somebody's? Nope, that is a flag. Coming in late, tackle for blue was made by number eight, Dafir Watts. We'll see what this flag is all about. Not sure if, uh, Bill, if he was maybe out of bounds for a late hit. Blue is saying it's against goal. I think it's going to be a block in the back. I thought the goal team did a smart thing. Under pressure, as a matter of fact, the blue defense has already registered three TFLs, tackles for losses. They've been getting great pressure, Ray, Dobson, and others. That time they roll. Donovan Brooks out to his left, and he is left-handed. A smart call by Brian Timpson and his staff, and then he hits Watts, but that, oh, Jenkins, and that's going to probably come back with the block in the back. And that's exactly what they're marking off right now. So it'll be a replay of second down, but it'll be from the 37-yard line. So that's going to be a second and 16 for the Gold Squad. 
neither team been able to generate much on offense. Gold's possession deep in the blue zone was off an interception by Shields. And a keeper there by Brooks, and he is tackled for a loss. On the tackle was Marquis Ellerby from nearby Newark High School, and so that's going to make it third and very long. Jody Russell's got to be really proud of his players. They've all shown up well. Uh, Marquis Ellerby did a great job playing that outside linebacker position. He was positioned off the line of scrimmage, but he read that zone read. Thunder Brooks was pointed to come back, and he himself got up the field and made a great tackle for the fourth TFL. Uh, this blue defense is being very aggressive here. Ellerby, a two-way star, first-team All-State at linebacker, second team as running backer. He was the leading tackler and rusher for the Yellow Jackets this year, made the playoffs for the second consecutive season. Brooks forced out of the pocket, gets away before he was tackled, out of bounds, trying to get it to Priscilla. Good defense there by Nazir Love and Damian Wright for the blue, and that's going to bring on the punting team for the gold. A really fun matchup that, uh, with the left tackle, Gibbs of Cape Henlope versus Nate Ray. I mean, they are going at it very hard. Ray is a tough guy to block, but that time Gibbs did a terrific job of reading the inside move by Nate Ray, blocking him down. That allowed Donovan Brooks to escape and be able to make the throw down the field, even though it was incomplete. Got another injury, this one with the blue squad. That's number 84, Ishmael Dobson from Wilmington Friends. Might have gotten tied up as Brooks came out to the left side there. He's up. Does that look like a cramp, possibly? Well, I learned a long time ago, John. I'm not very smart. I'm not <laughs> going to try to predict what these guys uh, have going on. I mean, he's walking whether it be a lower, let's just call it a lower body injury. Yep. Ishmael Thompson, uh, a terrific career at Friends School, a two-way performer as well as special teams. He's going to Kutztown to play defense up there, and I think that's a great spot for him, and he's got an opportunity to have a terrific career. Donovan Brooks is into punt from St. George's Tech. Back deep for the blue is number two, Jaden Smith, and number three, Lennox Preston from Newark High and Conrad Schools of Science, respectively. Brooks standing at his own 20-yard line. Punt is away and is blocked, partially blocked by Blue, and it's, they're going to let the ball roll, and did Blue touch it? Now, fortunately for Blue, they are going to end up with the ball. It looked like somebody might have touched it, which would have been uh, another fumble. And on the block was Robbie Tattersall, all six foot six of them, or however tall he is. He looks taller than six foot six to me. Let me tell you something. Robbie Tattersall has a great feel for rushing the punter. It's a really tough technique to learn. You've got to have, first of all, you've got to anticipate the snap and not be off sides. You've got to have a great get off. You've got to run the bend, as we call it, where you're working yourself to the landmark, which is where you think the punter is going to punt the ball from, and you're aiming about one yard in front of the foot. He did a terrific job of that. Crosses, didn't leave his feet. No chance for a roughing the punter. Did a great job, and now he's given the blue team an opportunity to have some good field position here. Bill, you said before the game, as good as Robbie Tattersall is on offense, he may be a better defensive player, and he showed it there. As well as a uh, special teams yeah, player as well. <laughs> and now he's in at quarterback. <laughs> so Tattersall takes this series after two series by Chris Albaro of Archmere. Robbie Tattersall, the Wilmington Friends quarterback, led the team for the first state championship since the early 80s. Bill, I know you know the exact year that was the Well, it happened year. to be 84, so a long time in between. <laughs> we were very fortunate this year in uh, this Caraval team that we were able to just sneak by and had a great season. And Tattersall just did against the goal team what he did against the 13 opponents he faced during the season this past year, which has run up the middle. Pick up a first down, and now he's headed over to talk to his coach about what the next play is going to be. Uh, Robbie Tattersall is a runner who can run inside and run you over. He can run outside and make you miss. But he loves that in-between-the-tackles action. That was a little counter tray. They fake the ball to the right. He comes back keeping the ball and does a great job of reading his blockers. Uh, he is long and gangly. He's got that long stride, and you don't think he's that fast, and all of a sudden he's just running away from <laughs> D-backs. So uh, that was a terrific run to give. 
the Blue a really good opportunity here to try to get a punch in here at the end, before the end of the first quarter. Patterson in the backfield by himself. Three wide receivers out to the left, two to the right. And actually two of those are slots on each side. And that's going to be a flag. They both moved in motion together, the two slot players. Patterson is going to pick up about four yards, but that's going to come back as both slot receivers moved at the same time. Both teams utilizing shotgun formations. That's where the quarterback is four to five yards behind the center. And in a game like this where you don't have a lot of time for timing, your center really takes on a huge role. He's got to be able to snap the ball, then he's got to be able to block a nose tackle who's an all-state player probably against him. Uh, Phil Crock from Friends is the center for the blue team, and he's done a great job of uh, working both with Chris Albert and Robbie Tattersall through the week, understanding their voice inflections, having the right timing, snapping it in the right places. Uh, he's done a great job. Phil is going to Alvernia to play football. He's also a terrific wrestler, had a great career wrestling, but has decided that he wants to continue his football career, and I think Alvernia is going to be very happy to have him. Same formation, this time, however, it's first and 15. Slots, both slots are filled, two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Man in motion from the slot, and the handoff goes to Kwasin Benson from St. Elizabeth. He gets around the side, ends up getting pushed out of bounds by L.T. Messick from Cape Henlopen Open High School, but not until he picked up most of what they needed for the first down. Now there is another flag on the field over at the 22-yard line, right where Kwasin Benson got a crack and a hole to get through to get as far as he did. We'll see if that one comes back here. Benson is an electric runner. Mike Lemon, the St. Elizabeth's coach, uh, had him for three years. And let me tell you something, this guy is really good. He plays both sides of the ball. He's got a tremendous burst. He has great vision. Even though this is coming back, it was a well-executed play down the field. Hudson Zawakis from Friends School did a wonderful job of blocking in space which freed up Benson for the additional yardage. Unfortunately, it's going to come back. Would have been a first down because Benson got down to the 11-yard line. Instead, it's going to be a uh, first down again, and it's going to be, it looks like to be about 20 yards to go, first and 20 on the 32-yard line. No game clock here like they would normally have for the University of Delaware game, so just like in a typical high school game, they've got to watch the back referee who starts the countdown. So far, no delay of games, which sort of is unusual given that these squads are playing together with the coaches for the first time in a real game. And that was a keeper by Tattersall and didn't get much, only two yards up the middle before he was stopped by a host of very large defensive linemen for the goal team. A terrific play made by uh, Hearn, Braden Hearn from Laurel. He rode that perfectly. Uh, he's a four year starter, a wrestler as well. He is really tough. He's going to Delaware Valley to play in that Laurel team. Uh, they, uh, they are moving up. They had a great domination for two straight years in that uh, other division, uh, the division, th uh, excuse me, called 1A. And uh, they are really well coached. Uh, they've got some terrific players. And that was a great read on Tattersall as he faked the speed sweep and then cut back against the green. All right, into the first quarter here, a fast one here at Delaware Stadium. 0-0, gold with, uh, blue with the ball when we come back right after this. Thank you. 
as we see it, second and 18 ball on the gold 30-yard line. No score in this game yet. Gold came close, got down inside the blue 15, but uh, four and out, eliminated any opportunity to score. Albaro now is back in at quarterback, and he throws the ball away, chased on the sideline over there by Drew Beckford, along with Jalen Powell, and that's going to bring up a third and long. They bring Al Barrow in, uh, maybe for some passing. They roll him to the right. He does a good job of understanding that nobody was open. Let's live to play another down, and very intelligently, he threw it away. He's going to F&M. He's got a great chance to play quarterback up there for a number of years. He's got a friend's receiver going up there as well, Hudson Zawakis, so he's got some familiarity. I think it's a great place for those two young to be, young men to be playing. Third and 18, Tattersall back in. Bill, which gives the goal defense the thinking they got to play both against the pass and the run now because Tattersall has already shown he's got the capabilities of running at, at least 18 yards, which would give them a first down. John, he was very sharp in warm-ups. And he runs up the middle, but Gold reads it well. Tackle made there by number 62, it looked like. I think I have that number wrong. 68, Stephen Ogden, maybe, by Middletown High School. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Those uniform numbers get crinkled up, and there's hard to read. Uh, Jimmy Ryder Hartman from St. George's uh, was there as well. Another one of those John Wilson uh, really fine players. He was an H-back on the offense for John Wilson, but played a lot of linebacker. He's big and sturdy, runs well, a very coachable young man. So Tattersall's in passing formation, but he's also the punter and has punted from this lineup as well over the years. But he passes it, finds his man up the middle. Nice catch there by Lennox Preston. Enough for the first down. Tackle made by, looks like number three, Gavin Tucker it is, but not until the Blue picks up a first down on the 11-yard line. Well, there was excellent protection there by the front five of the Blue team. It allowed Tattersall to survey the field. Lennox Preston was running a drag pattern, meaning a crossing route from right to left. He did a great job of getting to the stakes. Really good timing, and that's so difficult to develop in just sh such a short practice time. Remember, these kids came in on Sunday. They had a brief kind of get-together practice Sunday. They practiced two on Monday, two on Tuesday. Then they have a scrimmage on Wednesday, and then basically yesterday is a walkthrough. So really very little timing. Uh, really very little time to get your timing together, and that was great simpatico between Tattersall and Preston. I talked to both coaches midway through the week. You'll hear the interviews at the halftime, but both coaches talked about the intellect of both of these teams and how exceptional it was, which was going to allow them to incorporate a lot more things than they normally do. Just as we say, that blue takes a timeout. We'll take it with them. Still 0-0, but blue is Knocking on the door, you're listening to the DFRC Blue Note All-Star Game on the iHeart Sports Network. First and 10 for the Blue on the gold 11-yard line. Tattersall and shotgun to Jor White from Newark on his right hip. Coming out of the timeout here called by Blue. Each team is called one timeout. And Tattersall is going to keep it, and he's going to follow White to the right tackle, but unable to get anywhere as big number 60, Evan Brower from Smyrna, two-time first-team All-State Defensive nose, go, uh, nose tackle comes in and makes the tackle. Blower does a great job. He's got terrific leverage, great hand placement, was able to work down the line of scrimmage. That's their heavy unit that they worked on this week. Uh, unfortunately, Ishmael Dobson out uh, still with that little bit of lower body injury. But Kieran Yudovich from Archmere was in at the uh, fullback position. 
They run two lead backs through. They've got two tight ends. Nate Ray being utilized to the tight end. Now they'll spread it back out here for Tattersall. But a really well defense there by the gold team against that heavy unit. Three wide receivers to the right, two to the left, second and nine on the 10-yard line. Same place gold was early in the first quarter. The give is in, and did he get in? That was Kwasin Benson from St. Elizabeth. Touchdown, ref on the far side calls it. So Kasim Benson with a 10-yard touchdown run puts Blue on the scoreboard, 6-0. Well, that play was set up by a terrific block on the edge by Marcus Barkley, the right tackle from Howard. He did a great job of pulling, and then Benson understood that the defense was over leveraged. They had overcommitted to the outside. He cuts up immediately, does a great job of finding the end zone. And I'll tell you, Kwasim Benson is really a good football player. I love how hard he runs. He makes decisive cuts. Going to Lycoming, they've got themselves a really good player in Kwasim Benson. Extra point, Tattersall on the hold. Our barrow will kick it away. Kick is up and good. So with 9.25 left to play here in the Blue Gold All-Star football game, Blue strikes first, trying to make it two years in a row, winning this annual tradition. They're up 7-0, 9.25 to play. We'll be back right after this. Second quarter, John Busby along with Bill Harmon here at Delaware Stadium. Chris Albaro just kicked the extra point following a Kwasin Benson 10-yard scamper into the end zone. Blue leads gold, 7 to nothing. Blue leads the series 33-30 to overall. They snapped gold's four-game winning streak last year and are looking to make it two years in a row. All the schools from above the canal with the exception of Red Lion their representatives playing on the gold team. And so, Bill, a nice drive, really the first sustained offensive drive we've seen from either team. That was good execution and a huge third down play. Tattersall to Preston on that crossing route to get the big first down. Uh, Robbie Tattersall off to a great start offensively. Uh, completed his only pass for 18 yards, 46 yards rushing. He's also been pretty tough on defense. Uh, he had a quarterback pressure. He's got a 50-yard punt, and he held for that extra point from Alberto. Nate Morta was the center on that as well in Archmere. A player who's going to Villanova, he will not be playing football, but Nate Morta had a terrific career at the guard and linebacker for that very fine Archmere team. Two former Delaware High School players, Corey Silverglead and O.C. Chiquocha, I think I got that in the end, here helping us with the stats. Appreciate them volunteering their time with us tonight on a beautiful night where they could probably be doing something else. They've chosen to spend it with us, and we appreciate that very much much. Chris uh, Alba, do. Two guys from Friends School who uh, I got to coach. Uh, two exceptional young men. Uh, Corey's at the uh, University of Miami of Florida and O.C. is uh, playing football at uh, Case Western Reserve in Cleveland. That will answer my question. Where was Case Western Reserve? Kickoff is away and it's going to be brought back by Michael Pearson from Middletown working his way up and he's going to be brought down by Jay Simmons from Mount Pleasant, a late addition to the squad. Always good to see somebody get a chance. I'm glad they replace people when other people have to drop out for one reason or another. Well, it's terrific that Jay was available. Yeah. It's terrific that he was in shape to play and that he wanted to play. Uh, Jay comes from a really neat uh, family. Uh, his father, Jim Simmons, uh, was a terrific player, a longtime coach at uh, Westchester, where Jay is going to go play football. He's also been a longtime administrator. He was at Mount Pleasant for years, and I think you corrected me, and he's now at the uh, Department of Education. So uh, Jim Simmons, a wonderful career as an educator and coach, and he's got a son 
who was a really nice play, did a great job in coverage. He had a terrific career wide receiver as well for Mount Pleasant. Also played on the unified basketball team that made it to the state championship. Didn't win it, but made it to the state championship. So a very well-rounded, not only player, but a well-rounded person. And that's the kind of people that play this game. Run up the middle by Gold. It's going to pick up about three yards, bring up a second and seven on their own 28-yard line. John, I might get Osi on the... Uh, Headset here to describe what the, where the reserve comes from <laughs> with Case Western Brewer. I did a little bit of research for that. Uh, I'd like to know what my players are. It's a, actually a pretty interesting historical story we may get to later on. I would be very interested in that. And if we have a lightning storm, which could be the case, we'll have plenty of time to talk about it. <laughs> we can talk about the complete history of the reserve. Second down, and they have one on the scoreboard. That's not the case. Second down and six on the 29-yard line. Quick out, almost an interception there. Dominic Peatlock from Tower Hill jumped the route on the pass attempt there from the gold quarterback, trying to get that number there. It is uh, Brian Wright, the Smyrna quarterback, making his first appearance. And Brian Wright's a neat story, Bill. He waited his turn and then struggled early his senior year. And struggle might be the wrong word to use. He just wasn't the dynamic quarterback we were used to seeing at Smyrna. And then as the season went on, he became one of the best quarterbacks in the state. Well, they do a fabulous job of developing that offense and their quarterbacks throughout the years. Uh, Mike Judy's done a great job with that program, and uh, they win another state championship. And Brian Wright had an awful lot to do with it. He's going to Widener, and he's a really fine player. He's got a very quick release. Yeah, you saw the quick release there, but the ball's interception. Overshot his wide receiver. That's to nine Martin from Char Wilmington Charter, who gets the interception, the second pick of the day, uh, one for each team now. And so... Blue will take over. We'll see where they end up spotting the ball here. And it's going to be on the goal 46-yard line. So a nice interception there by Tanai Martin. Well, a terrific play by Martin, who was in a <coughs> wonderful position. Now, what happened there, right, was trying to step up in the pocket, and he was hit. So many times people say, oh, that's just a bad pass. Well, no, right was hit as he was throwing, and I think had he not been hit, the ball wouldn't have carried so long. So it's a tough play for a quarterback. You've got to shake it off. You've got to understand the protection package and hope that the next time you get a little bit more time. But a fine play by the blue defense is now getting very opportunistic. And they'll take over on the goal 46-yard line with 8.14 to play. Blue with a 7-0 lead. Robbie Tattersall in at quarterback. Three wide receivers out to the right, one to the left. Tattersall drops back, looks up the middle, firing to the end zone. Almost hits his man. He was trying to get the ball to Jaden Smith of Newark, covered there by P.J. Henry from Sussex Central. So, Bill, that's really a perfect throw. Would have been a great catch, but it was uh, it just a nice play that they weren't able to pull off there. Tattersall did a great job of working his speed in the pocket. There was some pressure. He slid to his right. He then stepped up in the pocket and threw a beautiful ball that traveled 55 yards in the air. And that's one of those plays where you look back and say, you know what? That was pretty good offense, but really just a little bit better defense. A wonderful coverage down the field by Patrick Henry, who was in per particularly good position. He did not let the receiver stack him. He was able to maintain really nice leverage. A wonderful throw, but even better defense by Henry. Second and 10 on the 46. Tattersall in the backfield by himself again. Three wide receivers to the right, two to the left. And Gold jumps off sides but gets back. Going in motion there is T.J. Martin. And Tattersall keeps it up the middle. Gets tackled after a pickup of about three. Lead man in on that tackle was Christopher Shields, a first-team All-State linebacker from Sussex Central. Shields did a really nice job there of diagnosing the play. They show that speed sweep action to Martin to the open field. And then Tattersall runs behind it with a trap block occurring. One thing about Robbie Tattersall, you may tackle him with one, but he's going to always be falling forward. And that's what the really good runners do. They're moving forward with their feet in their body lane to try to get as much available yard as that play should have been for none, and it ends up for three. Tattersall with Martin behind him, and that's going to be offsides. Surprised they haven't blown it dead because it was clearly on the offense. Tattersall gets tackled in the backfield. But that's going to, I believe, is going to be offside. Bill, you're pointing something else. You see something else? Oh, no, that's exactly yeah. right. And the play should have been blown down. Yeah, that's what I, that was my question. You were 100% yeah. right. And I think the officials are going to get together. This is really a fun crew. Bobby Hudson's been around for a long time, and I mean that as a compliment. Uh, he is one of the really fine 
football officials. He's probably near the end of his career, but you love him showing up because you're always going to get a really well officiated game. He's also a terrific baseball umpire as well. And it is going to be an illegal motion as a wide receiver jumped off. They're going to mark it off, or did they decline it? They may have. They may have declined it. They could not decline no, it. Okay. No, it's, it's, right. it's, it's an undeclinable. Right. That's what I thought, but I didn't well, know absolutely right. if the fact that they played it through maybe and that changes that. I'm not <laughs> sure the players heard the whistle, or maybe the whistle came yeah. just a little bit late. But uh, no harm, no foul. Third and 12, ball on the gold 48-yard line. So Blue looking, trying to punch in their second score of the game. They got a 7 nothing lead here with under seven to play in the second quarter. Another flag on the play. They're letting this play through, so maybe offsides on the defense. We'll see. Tattersall's trying to throw it down the field, realizing he's got a free play. Instead, he's chased and ends up falling backwards in on the tackle there. Looked like Christopher Shields again from Sussex Central. Well, Christopher Shields has been all over the field. Yeah, it might have been Ashton Stevens. I'm not sure. One of the two. Shields has had an excellent game with the interception and two tackles. Like kind of in on the third one there. Maybe an assist goes to him. Uh, he's got great feel for the game. He flows well right and left. And he's an excellent performer. And I believe they called the – I saw Coach Brian Timpson of the gold team decline the penalty. So it must have been – against the blue squad, and it's going to bring in a punting situation, so Tattersall's back to clearly punt this time. There was some movement by the right wing back, and you're going to get that in these games. You're trying to anticipate the count. You're not used to the quarterback's inflection. Plus, you have two different quarterbacks who use slightly different intonations. Amir Jenkins is back, and it looks like they're just going to let this one bounce. And a great kick by Tattersall. That ball's still rolling down to the eight, and it's going to be at the seven-yard line before it's all said and done. But another flag on the field. Tattersall's talking to the official who threw it. We'll see what this is all about. Any idea, Bill? I'm not sure of this one, but uh, what I love the fact is that uh, Robbie Tattersall's kicking the ball away from the single returner. As a returner, you're always going to try to catch the ball. That's what you're taught to do. But in that case, he was able to angle the ball away. He gets an additional roll over a four, about a 46-yard kick, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's where they twice now shifted the field position. Yale need a punter, too? <laughs> <laughs> well, as you said uh, in your pregame notes, John, <laughs> he, he can do it all. This is going to be a holding against the punting team. So the excellent punt by Tattersall. It's a good thing it was excellent because it's going to cost them, I assume, 10 more yards on the end of the punt, although they've – I'm a little confused, Bill. They've called a holding penalty against Blue. I guess Gold declined it. And is going to take the ball where it landed, which may just tell you how much they respect the foot of Tattersall. Unless the initial I referee think made the I wrong signal. I think this is the wrong signal. Yeah. And the, f the flag is a hold on the goal team and the blue team. Okay. Obviously, with that change of yeah. field position inside the 10, it's going to take the play. Right. And that would, make, that would make sense. And that's what they're marking off halfway to the field. So the initial referee pointed to the wrong team. But you nailed it, Bill, with that. So gold's going to take over first and 10. And now the refs are going to get together and discuss it again, I think. I think Brian Timpson, of the head coach of the goal team from Apoquinnemick, is kind of questioning why the extra walk-off occurred. And yeah. I think he's got an argument here. Now, I did not hear the exact adjudication, but we'll see. I wish the refs were mic'd up and we could hear this conversation, <laughs> John. <laughs> so here we go. I don't know that he's going to come over. The ref is coming over to talk to Coach Timpson. Coach Timpson, of course, led Apoquinnemick to its first ever what would be con would have been considered a conference championship, but now, of course, is the 3A Division One is what they call it, right? Division uh, championship and one of the close closest races I've ever seen there. At the end, you know, it was a combination of a win, a loss, and <laughs> points on the board. I think at one point, but Brian's done a great job there. He has the athletic director. Chris Mascara speaks very highly of him. Chris is a St. Mark's grad and has done a great job over there with all their programs in the athletic director, but he's been 
very pleased with the way Brian Simpson has brought this program along. And they, they have some very good players, but it really starts from the top. They get a great weight training program in the summer. Uh, he's got an excellent staff, and a lot of them are here with him. And uh, that program is only up and up. He also a, a good, so excellent softball coach. Apple softball, always a top 10 team, very often a top five team. The give is to Jaron Sample from Sussex Tech. He works his way around left. Picks up about three and a half or four yards. Caden Shockley from Laurel in at quarterback for the gold team. As we are at the 555 mark, blue with a seven nothing lead. Their one drive was uh, the best offensive drive we've seen tonight. Each team has one interception. And so a uh, defensive game so far. Field position has been a big factor. The turnovers, but the kicking by Robbie Tattersall, in this case, has pinned them back, and that switched the field, which ultimately enabled them to get on that first drive and a big pass hit by him as well. So the goal team needs to get something going here before halftime. Alvaro gives it to Rivera, who works his way around right tackle, and he's bottled up and taken down by a couple of blue players. Looks like number 80, Anthony Holloway, and number 8, Dafir Watts, on the tackle. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Going to bring up a third and nine. Excuse me, third and six for the goal. Well, that's some really good running there. The initial line of scrimmage where he was hit, he's able to bounce outside. It took several of the blue teams. Uh, Watts is doing a really nice job from DMA. Uh, he runs to the ball extremely well. He's got excellent instincts. He's a lacrosse player as well. So uh, I think he's really had a good game. He had a terrific tackle early in the game in the open field as well. Albaro, excuse me, uh, Shockley in the shotgun, overthrows his man, trying to get it to Corsillo, who's claiming he was held by Damian Wright, the defender. No flag on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down and bring on the punting unit for gold. Corsillo had a little bit of a case there, those long arms of Wright. Uh, he kind of reminds me of Sauce Gardner out there in the New York Jets. I know that's... Corey's favorite team, and uh, they're going to have a great season with Aaron Rodgers there, but uh, there was some really good coverage down the field. I think th there was a little mistake. I thought the pattern was broken off, and it looked like he was expecting him to be more in the post area, and he was running more over Faye. Little contact there. Uh, unfortunately, he was not able to out-talk the officials, <laughs> and nothing happens, and we'll see the punt here by Donovan Brooks. And let's remember, the first punt was blocked by Robbie Tattersall coming in from the Blues' left side. He's lined up there again. Let's see if he gets some pressure or if they've made a change. Don't meet many Jets fans, Bill. And so Corey and I, I think Corey's proud of it now. We might be the only two in the stadium, maybe the only two in the state, but I am as well. Nice kick there, and it's going to be fielded by Lennox Preston from Conrad. He's got a lead blocker trying to get around the right side and does to the 25, knocked out just shy of the 20-yard line. And there's a flag on the play in the backfield. We'll see what this is all about. If it's against the gold team, Blue will decline it, but we'll see. That was a terrific punt by Donovan it Brooks was. under pressure. As a matter of fact, Tattersall was double teamed and almost got there, and then Boston came across, and I didn't think he hit Brooks. I thought Brooks fell, but he might have been able to uh, trick the officials into getting the uh, running into the kicker, but Lennox Preston did a great job of catching the ball and then getting upfield, a really fine return by the young man from Conrad. So the goal will certainly accept the penalty, and that will give them the ball in punt formation at their own 13-yard line. Otherwise, Blue would have had the ball almost at the goal 13-yard line. So a good break, a lucky break, if you want to call it that, for the goal team. And that will give Donovan Brooks another opportunity to hopefully get off a similar punt. As you said, Bill, it was a great punt just a better return by the blue. This one also a good punt, however. This one's going to go right to Jaden Smith from Newark High, and he's going to follow Preston, and Smith is going to be bottled up and taken down by Jalen Powell from Dover High School, but not until he gets to the 30-yard line. So blue will take over at the gold 30-yard line with 4.13 to play and a 7-0 lead, Bill. So Again, another opportunity for Blue to see if they can do something. A nice return. I want to tell you what really made that play, what was impressive. You talk about special teams. They don't get a lot of time during this week to work on it, but downfield blocking by Damian Wright of Newark to try to free up his return. I mean, he stayed in contact with his man for 10, 12 yards. A great effort 
on special teams. And you hear that always preached. Hey, it's, uh, these are effort plays. And Damian Wright, uh, Jody Russell, when he watches this tape, is going to be very proud of his quarterback, now slot receiver and cornerback, doing a great job on specials for him. Jody Russell, of, Russell, of course, played in the 1994 game before going on to the University of Delaware and playing there. He coached for when he was with Tatton. I believe that was back in 2009, if I have that. You are absolutely correct. Jody Russell had a great uh, so a career at uh, Tatnall and then shifted back to his alma mater. And, as and that program is on the uh, uptick as well. On, on, the new work. on the rise, they've been in the playoffs uh, both years that, that the new class system was put together, and that's exactly why it was put together that way, to give teams more of an opportunity to get in the playoffs playing against other teams of similar size. The handoff is to Kwasim Benson. He makes a nice move trying to find the end zone for the second time tonight. Going to get pulled down at the 10-yard line and tackle in on the tackle there. Um, a couple of gold players, but a nice play there by Kwasim Benson. Benson, that was one of the best jump cuts I've ever seen. You usually only see it at the college and pro level, but he faked inside the defender committed he jumps back to the outside he gets downfield another terrific downfield block by Jaden Smith from Newark uh, their players are really well trained in downfield blocking he was also engaged for about 10 yards down the field as well so an impressive job by those Newark wide receivers and special teams I saw Benson play a couple games late in the season Bill and he was hobbling around he is a warrior out there and even into the playoffs he was hobbling. Give us to Benson again, trying to avoid a tackler. There does one, but not able to get past the second host of tacklers there, led by number 51, Braden Hearn from Laurel. But not until Benson gets down to the two-yard line, where it will be second and goal. Hearn's been involved in a couple of tackles, but initially Benson was met by Gavin Tucker of Apoquinimic, and he was able to step outside that tackle. That's what I like about Benson, John. He can run outside and he can show off that wonderful speed in the burst and the jump cuts, but he goes inside. He's got great leverage. He gets underneath tacklers, has a great forward lean, a terrific runner. And he's in there lined up behind Albero. Two, wide, two in the slot, one wide receiver out on each side. Man in motion left to right. And they're fumbling the ball in the exchange. Albero jumps on it, and it looked like they weren't sure whether they were going to hand it off or not. Lucky there that they got the ball back, and that's going to bring up a third down. Lost a yard, maybe two, going to push it back to the five-yard line. I couldn't tell if Chris Albero was trying to pull that ball. I think the mesh just wasn't quite right. Sometimes on those, the runner isn't sure whether to take it or not. Usually the rule is, if you feel it in your belly, in your gut, in your pocket, take the ball. And if not, you just run your route, and uh, the quarterback then pulls it. So I think that was just a little bit of that miscommunication that comes sometimes from not having a lot of practice time. And we're going to take a time out here. Gold doesn't like what they saw as they brought in an entirely new backfield. We'll take a final time out of this first half with him. 7-0 Blue leads Gold, 2-0-4 to play in the first half. Blue knocking on the door. We'll be back right after this. <laughs>
end zone from four yards out to put Blue in the end zone for the second time tonight. They lead 13 to nothing. Chris Albao in for the extra point, trying to make his second in a row. Robbie Tattersall on the hold. This is the third, uh, 67th annual Blue Gold All-Star football game. John Busby along with Bill Harmon. The kick is up, and Albaro punches it through. And so Blue leads gold 14 to nothing with 1.59 to play here in the second quarter. We're going to keep it right here. Bill, that was an impressive drive by the Blue. Yes, it was. I thought they did a great job of controlling the ball. Benson obviously made a couple big runs. He's got... Uh, Four carries for 35 yards and a touchdown. That time they go with T.J. Martin on a quick pitch and a terrific block out front by right guard Matthew Lazar from Newark. He's uh, one of their captains, and he did a great job of pulling out in front. But if you give Martin any space, he's got a big-time burst, and he's able to punch his way in. But some really nice blocking out front and a good job by Benson. A really fine play call by the Blue offensive staff. I want to mention that Johnson Lamb donates all the uniforms for football and cheer and the coaches' apparel, too. The company is co-owned by DFRC Blue Gold alumni Matt Greenberg and Billy Cannon. Greenberg is a current assistant coach at Mount Pleasant. I had a chance to meet with him on media day. Just a wonderful thing that they do. That donation has to be near $10,000 when you look at the apparel that they have. All first class, all great looking. The blue jerseys, the gold jerseys, the pants uh, that coincide with them. Uh, the only thing that isn't done by Johnson and Lamb is the helmets of the players. Uh, the tradition is they wear their school helmet, which is uh, really neat. Other sponsors of tonight's event include Jay Ambrosi Foods, NKS Distributors, and New Car. In fact, New Car has been a major supporter of DFRC for a number of years, and they're going to donate $100 to DFRC for any new Chevy sold in the month of June. So if you're thinking about buying a car, maybe thinking about buying a car for your child, as I'm going through right now, Think about new car Chevrolet. You buy a car from them, $100 of that cost will go to DFRC. 14 nothing. under two minutes to play here in what has been a defensive-dominated first half and interception for each team. Neither offense really able to get going. Uh, Blues drive, as good as it was, really was only from the 30-yard out. Their other drive was a little bit more extensive, uh, but it's been more of a defensive end of things so far, Bill. Field position has been a big factor. The uh, punting game for the Blue has really helped them out. Uh, Donovan Brooks has done a good job under pressure, but a really fine return there that set up that short field, and Blue is able to take advantage of it. A barrel with a squib kick. We'll see if Gold jumps on in a collision there, but a nice job by Amir Jenkins from Polytech hanging on to the ball, and Gold will take over on their own 43-yard line with 157 to play. Yeah, we call it a squib, John. I'm going to call that an onsides attempt, and Chris Albert was trying to pick that ball up himself. <laughs> uh, the Gold team did a good job, and again, when you have limited practice time, how often do you get a chance to practice an onside kick? And you usually don't see it very much, but Jody Russell... Uh, being the uh, Riverboat Gambler over there. Now he's going to give up some pretty good field position. Let's see if the goal team can't get at least some sort of offensive cohesion going here. Even if they don't score, they just need a drive to get some confidence. Remember, they get the ball at the start of the second half. Donovan Brooks in at quarterback. The lefty's got halfbacks on each hip. And he's going to hand it off around right. And that's going to be Kyle C. Wilson from state champion Laurel. And he's tackled by a host of blue players in there. He picks up two yards, going to bring up a second and eight. Though he did not make the ta tackle, uh, Watts from DMA did a great job of anticipating that, coming up from his inside linebacker position. And that allowed uh, Lorenzo Gales from Brandywine to finish up uh, the tackle. But a really nice play by Watts to turn the play back inside. Brooks in the backfield. On his left is Jaron Sample. Three wide receivers out to the left, one to the right. Clock is ticking, 118 to play. Brooks is going to keep it, go up the middle, and he's only going to pick up about two yards before he is brought down by a party of tacklers led by Tristan Wingo from William Penn. So the goal team is trying to trap Nate Ray, and Nate Ray is just too tough. So he gets up the field. Once he realized he was unblocked and it was a running play, he folded down the line of scrimmage. He took on the trap block, turned it back in, and Gales again on the tackle. A nice play by Brandywine, who also, talk about a program that's on the uptick. Brandywine High School has really done a nice job the past couple of years, and I expect them to have a really good season upcoming. So third down, 
Brooks backs up the lefty, rolling right, turns and fires it up the middle. That's a pop fly, and it's caught and intercepted by Jaden Smith. So Jaden Smith of Newark High with an interception, and Blue is going to take over with 32 seconds left on their own 16-yard line. We'll see if Jody Russell has a bag of tricks with 16 seconds left. He, he might. <laughs> uh, one thing, uh, Smith did a great job of just playing that very deep and high safety. He read the eyes of Donovan Brooks, who rolled out. And I think it was a smart play by Brooks. Put it up. Maybe you get a pass interference. Maybe you get a catch down there with so little time left in the half. Probably not going to hurt you. So he's taking a shot to get a big play before the end of the half and put his team in a position to score. Would have been a good punt to the 16-yard line. So only, only nothing bad could have come out of that unless he runs it back. So Blue will see what they do. Albert is going to be in at quarterback. Kwasim Benson, we've seen him break a few this far before in his four-year career. He certainly has the capability. And he's going to get the chance. Picks up a block, takes it over the right tackle. See if Jody Russell calls timeout or not. I believe he's got two left. Looks like he is just going to let the clock run down. It's going to be second and five. 18 seconds on the clock. So we'll get at least one more play. Now, interesting that they didn't take a timeout, but they're going to hurry up. Right. Yeah. So uh, unless got to be a little careful. Yeah. Now, Barrett fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, and he's barreled up and pulled down. That looks like big number 88, Jalen Powell for Dover. And that's going to bring us to the half here at the 67th annual DFRC Blue Bowl game. Bill, your quick thoughts in the first half of this 14-0 game, Blue with the lead. Well, the Blue team, it took advantage of a couple of the mistakes of the Gold team. They found a way to run the ball. Uh, Benson, in particular, has been very effective. Martin also. Uh, big third down pass from Tattersall to Linick. Preston from Conrad. Some good playing by Robbie Tatters. I would say the blue has the advantage, though. The goal team just needs to get some cohesion going offensively. When you play three quarterbacks, it really is hard to get in rhythm, so that's a little bit. It's an all-star game, and everybody yep. gets to play. But the, the goal team's going to have to get a little bit more productive offensively, see if they can't set up some of their play-action passing with some run game, and see if they can at least get a couple drives going here at the start of the second half. Remember, they do get the ball, but the blue has played pretty solid. Uh, almost mistake-free, but their defense has been very solid when they've had to make plays. All right, coming up at the half earlier this week, I sat down with DFRC Executive Director Jada Little and talked about this year's game, including the return to the traditional week-long camp here at the University of Delaware leading up to the game. And in case you missed them during our pregame show, we will play back the coaches' interviews conducted about halfway through the week-long training camp. Your halftime score, Blue 14, Gold 0. You're listening to the DFRC Blue Gold All-Star Football Game on iHeart Sports Network. <laughs>
front players Corby Silverglead and O.C. Chukocha doing the stats for us. Appreciate them taking one of their summer evenings away from whatever they normally do to be with us up here in the broadcast booth. 67th annual Blue Gold All-Star football game. Blue leads gold 14 to nothing. Kwasim Benson on a 10-yard run early in the second quarter, followed by a Chris Alberto kick put Blue up 7 nothing with 9.25 to play in the second quarter. And then late in the second quarter, T.J. Martin scampered in from four yards out. Uh, Burrow added the kick to put them up 14 nothing with 159 to play. And then an interception by Jaden Smith thwarted any opportunity that Gold might have had to try to punch one in before the half. And so, Bill, it's a game that's really been dominated by the defense. We talked about the one drive that Blue did have uh, was a good one, probably the best one of the night. The other drive was only 30 yards because of the interception and so or, or the partially blocked punt by Tattersall I should say and so it was just an opportunity there for uh, uh, the offenses really never got on track on either side certainly not on the gold side of things. Well you're right it's going to be important. Uh, Caden Shockley got off to a good start he's three for four for 17 yards but they've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him especially Nate Ray who has five tackles and one TFL he's had a couple of pressures. They've got to find a way to run the football and then set up their play-action pass. Their defense has actually been fairly solid. It's been the field position uh, created by the interceptions and a very good punt return by the Blue team that's given them the opportunity for Benson and Martin to score. Blue has been able to run the ball fairly successfully. Their defense has been very aggressive. They've had 10 different tacklers. They have two interceptions, as you mentioned. And uh, Watts, also from DMA, I think has been superb. So he and Nate Ray have really done a great job Defensively, Tattersall, Benson, and Martin. Offensively, that front five for the blue team has done a nice job blocking, and uh, we'll see if the gold team can kind of get going here in the second half, see if they can mix in the run and the pass, and they're going to need to get a, at least some sort of offensive drive going this first time, just if nothing else, to develop some confidence. The two buddies in the hand-in-hand -hand program are Matthew Ray, brother of Nate Ray, who Bill just mentioned. He's 16 years old, attends Brandy Wine High School, loves sports video games, cornhole, and Wawa. Zachary Worthington is the gold all-star buddy for the gold. 18 years old, attends Lake Forest High School, likes gaming, bowling, pizza, Rubik's Cube, weather, and golf. So congratulations to Zach and Matt for being selected to the 2023 Blue Gold All-Star Buddies. Quite an honor, uh, part of the hand-in-hand -hand program that is the tradition that the DFRC is. Speaking of Rubik's Cube, <laughs> did you see that young man that I set the all-time record? 3.14 seconds, I think it was. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't even begin to think that fast, much less move my fingers that <laughs> fast. It was incredible. What a, what a talent uh, in a world's record. Kicking off for blue is going to be Chris Albera. Handful of gold players back deep. And darkness is setting in, and we are high above Delaware Stadium. And that return is going to be by Noah Crisilla, the tight end from, or wide receiver, I should say, from Middletown. And he's going to return it to the 36-yard line, where gold will take over, looking to get into the end zone for the first time tonight. Well, Corsillo's a guy that can do a lot for them. They've got to find a way to get him the ball a little bit more often. A fine open field tackle there uh, by the field Watts from DMA, who's been all over the field, both defensively and special teams. But I really like this Corsillo. He's an excellent receiver. He's got great hands, ran a terrific pattern early in the game to get right to the stakes. Let's see if he can't do, develop a relationship with these quarterbacks and get their offense going. Caden Shockley from Laurel in at quarterback. He's been... In and out, swapping out with Donovan Brooks from St. George's. And we got a flag to start off the second half here. There's 12 players on the gold team. So illegal substitution penalty, not the way that Brian Timpson wanted the uh, gold to start out here. So it'll be first and 15 from the 31 instead of from the 36. But we got a few penalties, but really not as many as you might have expected. Again, with a team that's practiced together about five times. Well, you make a great point. It's been pretty well played, cleanly played that way, and certainly those more serious penalties, the uh, personal fouls have not occurred. So it's been a very hard play game, but very cleanly played game. Kyle C. Wilson takes the handoff from his hometown quarterback, also from Laurel. Looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage tackled by a handful of blue players. I heard one of the coaches, you mentioned the unsportsmanlike stuff, and, you know, 
I heard one of the coaches talking to their team about, you know, how this works. And basically, if a player is mouthing off, that player gets one warning, and then he's taken out of the game. Well, I think it's a great rule. And, uh, yep. this, is, this is a game much bigger than the players, much bigger than the actual final score. So uh, you really need to understand your place in the game and uh, just get rid of those shenanigans and just play football and enjoy the moment. And knock on wood, that's what we've seen tonight. Not even one uh, close to a flare-up. Shockley hands the ball off again to Wilson, looked like. Double-check that number when he comes out of the pile. A sample of the big sample. Yep. fullback from Sussex Tech. Uh, this blue defense has really done a nice job of swimming the ball. That front of uh, Ray, Gales, and others have really done a nice job allowing the linebackers to flow. Jeffrey McNulty from Concord did another really good job there of reading the action, slipping in there, making a tackle for a slight TFO. Third and 15 on the 31, so Gold has not recovered from that illegal substitution penalty that they started the second half with that got him back to this point. Haven't picked up a yard on either play. Shockley drops back, and there, Bill, just as you spoke about, needing to get Priscilla involved, they do, and he hauls in the catch at the 49-yard line, first down for Gold, and that's exactly what Coach Timpson's team needed there. Well, Shockley had the time, and he was able to survey the field Noah Crisella running a deep in route uh, from the left side, almost like a deep dig. Really well thrown ball because he had time. Shockley's been very impressive to me. He delivers the ball quickly. He knows where his players are going to be, and he's got great footwork. And a handoff there to the fullback, Michael Pearson, from Middletown High School. Picks up about seven yards. Going to bring up a third and three. So a nice pass-run combination there, and Gold is on the move. Well, Michael Pearson, uh, a terrific player. He's known for his defense, but I'll tell you what, I did a couple of their games, and he's a great runner. He's sturdy. He runs with a low center of gravity and always looking for extra yards. So a second down and four on the 44. Handoff again given there to Michael Pearson. He rumbles for a first down up to the 40 before he's brought down. So two straight first downs for the goal team. I'd have to say this is their best offensive showing of the night, though. Absolutely, and it starts with a little bit of the run game, and then that allows Shockley to sit back and survey the field. Crescello, let's look, see if we don't see him targeted again at some point, uh, but getting the run game going is going to be imperative for the goal. The three wide receivers to the left. is the one closest to the press box here, all the way over on the left. That looks like it could have been offsides, but no flag there as number 21 Marquis Ellerby came flying over the line of scrimmage. And the ball, the tackle is made at the 30, at the 41 yard line, gonna be a loss of one, bring up second and 11. Ellerby made that similar play in the first half. He's reduced, dropped off as a defensive end and then reads the play and quickly comes downhill. He's been unblocked on both of those plays, a really short tackler who's gotta make uh, Jody Russell feel badly that he's gonna <laughs> lose him because he's been outstanding. Five talented Newark Yellow Jackets will head off into the next phase of life. So Jody Russell's going to have a struggle trying to pick things up where he left off, having made the playoffs two years in a row. But uh, Newark's numbers are up, which is a good sign. Shockley rolls out, chased in the backfield there, almost sacked, got the ball away, going to be incomplete. Trying to get the number of the man. Oh, that was LB again. LB did a great job of closing in. Now, the blue team is short. A couple of their really good defenders. I was looking over as they came out. Both Ishmael Dobson from Friends School and Kieran Yudovich, who's had five knee operations in his life. Uh, he's talk about a warrior. He is one of the tough guys. He is also both are in street clothes now. Shockley throws it out to the left to Crisilla. So for the second time in this drive, Crisilla's going to haul in a first down. And, Bill, you mentioned they got to get any more involved, and they've done that, and it's paid off and what's become the, set, the best drive of the night for Gold. Well, Shockley's now five for seven. He's a very accurate passer, stepping up against this pressure, and uh, they found a matchup over there. They're working against Dominic Peatlock, who is a really good D-back from uh, Tower Hill. Kevin Wasco is going to miss him. And off to Pearson, trying to run, get around the left side. He's shoved out of bounds there by Marquis Ellerby, calling that name a couple times in this drive. Well, there's been really good rhythm to the play calling here for the Gold team. They're mixing up the run and the pass. At some point, Shockley, I think, might be able to take a shot down the field. That's what they're trying to set up. Second and four on the 23-yard line. This might be the play where they're able to do that, where they'd still have third and short 
if it's not successful. Gold having trouble getting the play in here. Shockley has it in. He's got Pearson on his left hip, two wide receivers on each side of the line of scrimmage. Shockley's going to keep it himself, pick up the first down and more. Shockley keeps his feet, dies for the end zone. Touchdown, Shockley with a 23-yard scamper into the end zone. We talked about Caden Shockley's ability from the pocket and his accuracy and his playmaking ability, but he is really known for his tremendous running. Last year, he averaged over almost 10 yards a carry for that terrific all team. Uh, that was a great what we call just zone follow. They fake the zone, and he follows the running back through the hole. A great effort at the end to complete the score. I've really been impressed with Shockley. Shockley is hoping to play quarterback at Salisbury next year. A four-plus GPA, five-year starter on the baseball field, four-year starter on the gridiron. Just an incredible athlete, one of those athletes you only see come around once in a while. And he is going to take the snap here on the attempted two-point conversion. Rolls out to his right, looking into the end zone, and that ball is knocked down by Robbie Tattersall. That he's, not only is he tall, he's got length <laughs> as well. As they yes, say. he does, and a really great feel for the game. He just kind of matched Shockley as he rolled out. Didn't come up. He's very smart that way. Forces Shockley to try to fit the ball in behind him and a really nice defensive play. Now, they're staying down on that field. There's going to be a holding on the defense. So, Gold is going to get an opportunity now to either maybe try a kick or maybe a two-point conversion here. My guess is they're going to go for two again. I'm not sure they had a lot of time this week to work on their place kicking. And the kicker is Noah Crisilla. He's been the one kicking off, but I don't believe he was the place kicker. In fact, I'm confident he was not the place kicker for Middletown. They've year. got Sample in, and that's the big bruising fullback. Let's look to see if he either doesn't need Shockley through the hole or they give it to him. Pearson's in the backfield with him. And so a two-point conversion attempt here. And they hand it off to the big guy, but he is still on his feet now, eventually brought down by a host of players there. That was Sample, as Bill pointed out. So neither two-point conversion worked. Going to stay 14 to 6 here. Blue leads gold, 741 to play. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back right after this. Set up Caden Shockley's 23-yard touchdown run to put gold on the scoreboard here. 7.41 to play. Blue with a 14-6 lead. Crisilla gets set to kick off, and he does go into the hands of London Bright from Hudson. Bright returns it to the 35, knocked down at the 38-yard line. In on that tackle, looked like number 10 from the gold, LT Messick from Cape Henlopen. So, Bill, a great drive by the goal team. The best mix of pass and run we've really seen from either team. Goal just executed that drive perfectly. Shockley was really the guy that made it happen. He had two carries for 21 yards and the touchdown. He was 5 for 8 total for the game for 46 yards. Uh, he's really impressed me with his leadership. Uh, he took some hits early on. He didn't let that bother him. I think Salisbury's got themselves a pretty good player. 
London Bright on that return from Hudson, kind of a neat story. Uh, he played a different position because of injuries in the lineup, and so going to play football at Wilkes College. The ultimate team player, uh, new head coach Dave Collins, told me he was the offensive coordinator for the past 10 plus years at Hudson, and so he sacrificed his natural position, which was wide receiver, to play quarterback for that Hudson team. A Hudson team that struggled, uh, and so even more, you know, of a gratitude for when you have a player that you know is going to play a different position at the next level, who's willing to do that for his team. So London Bright on a nice return there. We got a stoppage of play here, Bill. I'm not sure why are you. Uh, just some confusion, I think. There, with Jody Russell talking to uh, Bobby Hudson and others. Uh, I think it had something to do with the play clock. I look over on that sideline, and of course, uh, who came out, the uh, gentleman who came out for the opening coin toss, uh, Bob Tattersall, the longtime uh, head coach at Friends School, turned over the reins this past year to his son, Rob Tattersall. Uh, coach Tattersall uh, coached me and his first team in 1968, and let me tell you something, he has had one story career, the most wins, uh, especially considering the small school size as well as the limited schedule early on. He's over there helping that blue team out, and uh, another great assistant coach in the state, uh, Ronnie Smith, has been a volunteer this week for the blue team, and he's a St. Mark's coach, and his son-in-law, Zeb Blum, we mentioned earlier on, uh, is over on that staff as well. Now Burrow back to pass, finds his receiver, Leonard Preston from Conrad, and he's going to go the distance. Blue answers gold and extends the lead to 20-6 to on that 42, uh, excuse me, 62-yard touchdown Pass and catch. Got to give Albero a lot of credit. He came back. That was a pass that he overthrew on the first play of the game. They tried that post wheel, and a terrific pass and catch. A huge play to get the blue team uh, back on the scoreboard. But I just like the fact that Judy Russell and uh, Darren Brody, the offensive coordinator for the goal uh, for the blue and also for the New York team, came back with the same play call. They loved it. That may have been a press box call. They've got Mike Ryan, one of their assistants, up in the booth. Probably had a good uh, read on that one. Took a chance, and it paid off. Robbie Tattersall in for the hole now. Chris O'Barrow trying to punch his third extra point through in three attempts and give his team a 21-6 to six lead. Hold is down, kick is up, and it is good. So with 7.25 to play, Blue leads goal 21-6. to six. We'll take a break. You're listening to the Blue Gold All-Star Football Game on the iHeart Sports Network. And Priscilla returns the kick to the 34-yard line where Gold will take over with 7-17 to play, trailing 21-6. Blue trying to win its second game in a row here at this annual Blue Gold All-Star football game after Gold had won four straight. So Blue hoping to hang on at this point. And, Bill, you're certainly not in a must-score situation yet, but I think this is an important drive for Gold. Oh, yes, it is. And uh, this Lennox Preston has really uh, been very impressive to me, uh, Chet. 
Walker, the head coach over there, has done a really nice job with that program in his second year. This will be his third, but uh, this young man is going to Kutztown, can really fly, and he's a great receiver under pressure. Brian Wright making his second appearance, trying to find Priscilla. He was draped, and now the flag comes out, and that's going to be a pass interference call. And in the defense there was Damian Wright from Newark, draped all over Priscilla. And so Brian Wright's pass incomplete, but he's going to get a penalty out of it. Right, of course, had an interception in his first appearance early in the first half. Priscilla is difficult to cover because he uses his arm action really great. It's difficult to tell sometimes is he coming out of his break to make a move across the field or up the field. He's got excellent speed. He's a very physical receiver, competes really well for the ball, and we've already talked about him on a couple of special teams plays as well. He's a good returner. This guy runs hard, and he's got a big-time motor. He runs hard on every route, whether he's – Involved in the pattern or not? Brian Wright trying to get his team together. He's going to head to Widener next year. Had an excellent senior season. One of the better quarterbacks before the season was over in the state of Delaware. Takes the snap, hands it off. Run is up the middle. That's Kai Rivera from Lake Forest. And he picks up a first down taken down by Anthony Sidbury from Mount Pleasant. But again, not until the first down was picked up. So it's going to be first down on the 39-yard line. So Gold with a nice first down. There. Some good blocking by the left side of the goal front. They center uh, Brower. Then you've got Beatty at left guard and Gibbs at left tackle. They really had a good game. And uh, they're blocking a tough dude over there, Nate Ray. Wide receivers, two on each side, right in the shotgun formation as both quarterbacks, all quarterbacks have been every night. Rivera ducks one tackle and then is taken down just shy of the first down, it looks like. Tackles made by Marquis Ellerby. Uh, Rivera's got terrific leg action. He reminds me of actually our statistician standing behind his <laughs> O.C. Uh, who had great feet, never gave up on a play, always had an extra way to keep his legs churning, but he's really difficult to tackle because Nate Ray was in there in the backfield looking for his fourth TFL, and Rivera was able to step out of it. He had a great career at uh, Lake Forest. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Rivera on Wright's right hip. And the handoff is to Rivera, and he is brought down shy of the line of scrimmage there by Marquis Ellerby, so another nice tackle by the senior from Newark. Well, Ellerby has been all over the field. That's his fourth tackle. He's, uh, he's not going to get credit for a TFL there, but almost. He has a TFL and a quarterback pressure. He's been outstanding. Jody Russell got to be very pleased with all of his players' performance. Going to be third and one. I'd have to assume this is two down territory for sure. See what Brian Timpson, if he's got a trick play maybe here. No, and he's still going to have a fourth and one if it doesn't work out. Right in the backfield by himself, but all of a sudden an 11th player runs onto the field. That's Kyle C. Wilson from Laurel, who will be on Wright's left hip. Three quarterbacks to the left on the short side of the field, one on the other side. And Wright passes. Looks like it's complete to Priscilla. It is good enough for a first down. And Bill, you made the call in the last time Gold had the ball that they had to get Priscilla more involved. He made two big catches for first downs on that drive and a big catch for a first down here. Well, that's his third reception for about uh, 56 yards. Uh, Priscilla, as I mentioned, a really good route runner. But what I like about the fact he competes on every play. He's a big play specialist, but he's not afraid to block downfield, do the special teams work. Uh, he's been very impressive. I think he's going to have a wonderful career uh, wherever he in decides to play football undecided at the moment. Wright fakes it to Wilson, then scampers around the right side and gets to the 12-yard line. Gold looking for a late hit there, not going to get it. Everybody gets up and is okay. Going to be a first down for Gold at the 11-yard line. So Gold knocking at the door again for the second time here in the third quarter. Well, some excellent quarterback play here by the goal team in the second half. Uh, Brian Wright, known as a quick-release passer and kind of running that dynamic offense of Smyrna, he's an underrated runner, very quick there, got to the outside, just a breakdown of communications by the blue defense. And there's going to be a timeout here. We'll see which team's going to take it. Waiting for the signal. It's going to be blue. We'll take it with him. 4.58 to play here in the third quarter. Blue leads goal 21-6, to six, but gold set up on the 11 yard line we'll be back right after this
and goal from the 11, rights pass to Groherty in the middle of the end zone, incomplete, brings up a second down and 11. That was really a terrific coverage there by the blue team, but more importantly, Seth McGroherty of Red Lion, uh, that team uh, had an outstanding season. They were a high-powered offense. McGroherty, a really good downfield receiver, meaning that he was excellent and 20-yard plus opportunities. Wilson with the ball bottled up after a two-yard gain in on that tackle, among others, was Dafir Watts from Delaware Military Academy, going to bring up a third and nine. Well, this is clearly four-down territory, especially with the fact that they do not, I'm sure, have a field goal kicker. Let's see if they can't get a little play action. Uh, that option play that they ran earlier on with uh, right getting out on the perimeter might be a, another call to come back to. A little confusion getting the play in, but it does look like they're going to get it off. Two wide receivers on each side. Looks like Michael Pearson in the backfield to the left of Brian Wright. Smyrna and Middletown connection there. Wright drops back to pass, flings it out to Wilson, who makes a nice catch and ducks two tackles before being pushed out. And there's going to be a flag on the play. And I believe that's going to be, it's going to go against gold. The question is what it's going to be. And that was Michael Pearson who got hit out of bounds. Looked like there could have been a late hit, but the flag actually came down before what could have been considered a late hit when the blue player slammed Pearson down to the ground. So we'll see what they come away with here. Refs are getting together to try to sort this one out. It's a personal foul, so. First unsportsmanlike or personal foul of the game at the four minute mark, or 3.57 to be exact, of the third quarter. And so hopefully the last. And so I believe that player has to come out of the game, but we'll see. It's going to be a third down and two. Well, Wright did a great job of getting that ball out under some pressure. And Pearson with a tremendous open field move to fake inside and go outside to get additional yardage. And in motion right to left. And the hand is going to be to Wilson. And he the ball pops up in the air. Wright ends up with it. And so it almost looked like Pearson threw it up in the air, which I'm sure he didn't. <laughs> but Wright came yeah, That would have been a very creative play. Yeah. Yeah. Tatterson and Watts there to make that play. <laughs> Uh, deep in the backfield against a really good runner. So that's going to bring up fourth down now. So we've gone from first and 10 at the 11 down to the four yard line and now back to the 11, no, I'm sorry, back to the eight yard line. And this is fourth down and you're right, Bill, they don't have a kicker. So they're going to bring in, Wright is in, in again, not bring in, he's been in. Let's Here's watch this matchup down in the low part here. This is Crisella versus Wright of Newark. And they've cleared the rest of the defense out. Tattersall is cheating up, and now he's going to come in, and they're going to throw to Crisella, and the ball's going to be out of bounds. So coverage there by Damian Wright really wouldn't have mattered. The ball was uncatchable, out of bounds. I like the play call, just didn't execute. Well, they showed trips to the other side. Crisella matched up single coverage over here. Uh, Damian Wright really accepting the challenge. He didn't have any safety coverage. What they did was bring an extra rusher off the edge. They can only rush five in this game. Tattersall inserted from there, but uh, really good coverage by Wright, who's long on. I mentioned, I think he's a great athlete, got great hips in space, and did a good job of covering Gold's best receiver. So Blue held on. This is the DFRC Blue Gold All-Star Football Game. John Busby, along with Bill Harmon, $50,000 distributed to nine organizations in 2022, the Arca Delaware Art Therapy Express Program, Artworks for All, Delaware Care Plan, Down Syndrome Association of Delaware. We'll tell you the rest right after this play. As Blue is in, two wide receivers, one in each slot, handoff up the middle, and down at the 11-yard line, bring up a second down. Chris Albero was in, and he handed off to Pearson. That's, oh, only, that's, the sorry, second, Martin. that's only the second play of the quarter for the blue team. Yeah. He hit that long pass for the touchdown. The goal has really had two long drives occupying most of this quarter. So their ball possession time is going to look great, but that's an unfortunate one where they couldn't come up with a score, especially when they had it their third and two 
inside the five-yard line. The other four organizations embrace Delaware. Forward Journeys, formerly CERTS, as many would know it, Kent Sussex Industry, and Waggies by Maggie and Friends. Since 1956, more than $6.3 million has been distributed to organizations across the state that benefit uh, in people with intellectual disabilities. Pass to Kwasin Benson. He gets around the corner, picks up a first down, and then is tackled from behind, but not before he was able to get that first down. That was big Evan Blower from Smyrna, the two-time All-State performer on the tackle from behind. And what a hustle play he made catching up with Benson. Well, Bo did a really nice job there of looking off the defense and hitting the swing pass, but what makes those plays go is downfield blocking. Hudson Zawakis from Friends School is going to Franklin Marshall to play with Bo. a really nice block down the field. And also Jay Simmons from Mount Pleasant doing a great job of latching on keeping their feet moving without holding to free up for extra yardage. So first down and 10, ball in the 21-yard line, 135 to play, Blue leads goal, 21-6. Trying to win their second game in a row, and that's a handoff, and caught from behind is Lennox Preston. A nice tackle there by number 20, Ashton Stevens from Indian River. Well, what a terrific play by Stevens. They run a slot reverse. It was set up well because they've been running the ball to that side, but uh, Stevens really held his ground there and did a nice job of maintaining his leverage. A terrific play in a big moment. Jody Russell bringing out that bag of tricks. We knew he would. He's tried the onside kick. Uh, he's thrown the wheel route twice, uh, once for a touchdown, and here he tries the uh, reverse. Reverse didn't work as well as the wheel, wheel route did. Second and 18 ball in the 13, under a minute to play here in what has been a fast-paced game with uh, runs dominating the play calling. And as I say that, Chris Albaro keeps it, runs it up the middle, tackled by a pair of gold players, including number 63, or 68, excuse me, Stephen Ogden from Middletown. They run that speed sweep fake. And any time you're faking the ball to Benson, you've got to get some sort of movement out of the defense. They're hoping either for a slant or the linebackers to overrun, and then they try to run out Barrow back in behind. Chris started out a little slowly. Uh, he's recovered to be four for eight with that big, huge uh, touchdown pass to Lennox Preston to start their drive, their first drive of the second half to get him back on the board. We'll see if they're going to run a play or not. The clock runs out in the third quarter here. Weather remaining perfect so far. Just a little bit of chill in the air for a summer night. No storms on the horizon. We should be able to get through the fourth quarter. We'll have it for you when we come back. Blue leads gold, 21-6. Harmon, Blue leads goal, 21-6. Bill, this is a matchup we were talking about. You know, 66 years they've been doing this, and the score between the two is 33-30 to 30 with three ties. It's amazing that it has been that close. You would just think one team would dominate more than the other, but, you know, it's been the trends of how football really has been in Delaware that has kind of led to this. 
Well, you're absolutely right. And the blue team started out in the beginning of that first game in 1956. They won five games in a row. Uh, the blue team won last year to stop a four-game winning streak. And after that, they kind of went back and forth over the years. So it's been incredibly balanced. And I think that's just a, a great tribute to kind of both sides of the state because at times demographics play a role early on. The blue team had the... Uh, had more of a population shift. Uh, they had William Penn, Newark, and Sally's were all uh, huge schools for that uh, era and really had some great players that uh, played in those games. But for the goal over the time to kind of figure it out and shift back, and I think the DFRC's done a nice job of working back and forth different teams from New York, from goal to uh, blue to try to keep the balance. And it is amazing after all that uh, that you would be that close in terms of the outcome. So Blue has a third and six on their own 15-yard line, and Gold would love nothing more for them to be able to force a punt here and get the ball back. Uh, Barrow up the middle, finds his man, and picks up a first down. That was Marquis Ellerby from Newark. We've called his name a couple times on defense. Now it's on offense. So Ellerby with a, Ellerby with a nice catch and grab there to pick up the first down for Blue. Let's credit that blue offensive line. They did a great job of holding off the rush. Albero was able to take a deep five-step drop. He bought some time. When he has that kind of time, he's got terrific mechanics in the pocket. And then to throw to a player like Ellaby running that deep dig pattern from left to right, a terrific throw and catch gives Blue some better field position. And this is handoff around the end to Kwasin Benson, who gets tackled. But, you know, the key thing for Blue right now is the clock is running, Bill. They're trying to run this clock. As we are in the fourth quarter, a quick game so far. Kicked off at 7 o'clock, and we just passed 9 o'clock. Absolutely. We talk about Benson and all the really good things he does, but if you think about it, John, he rushed for over 5,000 yards. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, 80 plus t uh, uh, touchdown. I mean, he was just an incredible player. And in one game, uh, one of our statisticians just gave me the inside scoop. He rushed for over 500 yards in a high school game. Wow. Like that is incredible because when you're rushing for 500 yards, I guarantee you the clock was running in the right. second half. <laughs> yeah. So uh, even uh, a better performance than imagined. And he's going to play football at Lycoming. Uh, Burrow keeps it, trying to keep the clock running. Makes a couple jukes, isn't able to get very far. Picks up a yard or two maybe in on the tackle there was number 23, Christopher Shields, and got some help from a couple of his teammates there. Well, a nice job there in the offensive scheme. They run that Again, uh, belly read, and they're actually pulling a lineman from the backside. They'll pull the right guard on that to kick out, and that's Lazier, and Albero runs behind him. It did a good job there of just securing the football and taking what was there. Comes up right now with another big third down play. Both quarterbacks uh, for the blue team hustling over to Coach Jody Russell or whoever's calling the plays over there after each play. You know, like a lot of things, tough to get hand signals involved here when you're practicing a handful of times coming into the game. Third and 12 on the 33, so another big third down for Blue and could be a big third down stop for Gold if they were able to hold him. Alvaro drops back to pass. Looked like he was going to try to run. Thought better of it. Gets the ball out, and the ball is complete to Lennon Preston, but he gets pushed out of bounds by Gavin Tucker from Appaquinimic. And it's going to bring up a fourth down and two. What do you think, Bill? Going for it or kicking away? Well, the way Jody Russell's been, he kind of reminds me of <coughs> Ron Rivera, of, <laughs> uh, of the Riverboat Gambler. But uh, I got a feeling he might punt it here. Uh, they have decent field position to pin the goal team back. The goal team has had to take a lot of running plays to score. Uh, so I think it's probably the more prudent thing to do here, but we'll, we'll see. I don't know if they have a fake punt in or not, but uh, Robbie Tattershall would certainly be the right guy to possibly run the ball for you. And he is, and he's going to be backed up in punt formation, back on his own 30. And it's going to be P.J. Henry from Sussex Central on his own 20 waiting to receive the punt. They need three yards for a first down. Tattersall punts it away, and... Tucker's got, or Henry's got it, makes a move, and a nice shoestring tackle there by Damian Wright of Newark. So, caught a couple of Newark players here in the last couple of plays here. And so, Gold has it uh, with 9.31 to play and trailing 21 to 6. It's a 43-yard punt, about a three-second hang time, and a good return and a really nice play, keeping his contain, keeping his leverage with Damian Wright on the outside. He was the 
Gunner to the left, he was blocked early, but he set and did not throw inside to not allow the goal return to get outside him. So a pretty heads up play with a good return on a, a decent punt. Uh, so special teams have been a big factor here. Blue off, uh, the blue defense got a nice rest there with their team putting together a couple first downs and a sustained short drive, but a drive nonetheless that spanned from the third quarter to the fourth quarter. You're listening to the DFRC Blue Gold All-Star Football Game. John Busby along with Bill Harmon. Blue leads gold 21 to 6. Blue struck first when Benson scampered in from 10 yards out, and then they scored on a TJ Martin four-yard touchdown run. Gold, Caden Shockley, a 23-yard touchdown run, but a quick answer by Blue when Albero found Lennox Preston for a 62-yard score to put Blue back, or not back on top, but to the 21-6 mark where it stands now. Shockley looking for running room and a great shoestring tackle there for the blue. Looks like number eight, the fear Watts from DMA on that tackle. Watts makes the play, but when he watches the tape, he's going to thank Nate Ray. <laughs> they tried to trap Nate Ray out, and for the third time, that's a quarterback counter with Donovan Brooks running the ball. Ray closed down and compressed the hole and forced Brooks to bounce out deep, and that way the defense could run to it. So Nate Ray with another outstanding play. Watts, the recipient of really good defensive line play. I've been very impressed with Nate Ray tonight. Uh, we've talked about him a number of times. He played for Sally's, going to the University of Delaware. He is a dynamo on defense. He's a terrific young man, and he's got a special cause in playing this game. Shockley in shotgun formation. Jaron Sample from Sussex Tech on his left hip. And it looked like Gold moved early, so that's going to cost them five yards. Refs getting together to finalize that decision. By the way, that was Watts' sixth tackle with two TFLs, tackle for losses. So the Blues done a really nice job of kind of what we call resetting the line of scrimmage a couple yards in the backfield. That really makes it difficult for runners to find direct access. They're forced to bounce outside as it was on that prior play, and that allows players to run to the football and really use their athleticism. So good team defense exhibited here by the blue team. Illegal motion penalty pushes Gold back to the 28-yard line where it's second and long. And a keeper by Shockley, he gets up to the 30-yard line where he's brought down by a host of blue players. Led there, looks like by number 80, Anthony Holloway from McCain in on that tackle. And when you are playing opposite Nate Ray and Robbie Tattersall, you're not going to get your name called a lot but <laughs> because they're going to make a lot of plays. Now, surprisingly, they've actually tried to attack Nate Ray. I think uh, even though he's really good in pursuit, you've almost got to go away from him and just uh, hope that you can uh, have the better matchup on the other side because Ray has just been terrific tonight. Shockley in the shotgun position there. And Sample moves from his right hip to his left hip. Shockley's back to pass, throwing it up high and deep, looking for his receiver, and tipped away, trying to get the ball to Seth McGroarty. And on defense for the blue was Anthony Sidbury, along with Dominic Peatlock. Well, we talked about Peatlock earlier in the show, and uh, he was a multi-year starter for Tower Hill, who's just had a great record over the last uh, 10 years. Kevin Wasco, the coach, has done a fabulous job. Pete Lock, a really good de defender, but he's also uh, known for in that single-wing attack. He's one of the quarterbacks in the backfield, halfbacks, a really fine runner. He had a great career, and uh, I know Kevin Wasco will be sorry to see him go. In the punt for the third time for the goal team is Donovan Brooks, counting up the number of players, realizes he's down one, but two guys came on the field, and now one's going to scamper off. It'll be Kai Rivera who stays on the field as the 11th player on the punting team. Two back deep for Blue, and a near block there. They're going to let it bounce, and it's going to end up taking a Blue bounce back into Gold territory. Gold will fall on it, and Blue will take over on the 47-yard line of the Gold team. And Bill, I think it's safe to say at the 731 mark with 21 to 6 that Gold has to get a stop here. They cannot allow Blue go down and score. They need a stop, but they need to create a takeaway and get themselves back 
on offense quickly. Uh, the Blue has been able to run the ball here. I think they'll use the clock appropriately, runner stay in bounds, take a lot of time in between plays. If you're actually playing it uh, strictly to win, uh, Jody Russell may want to dial up a couple trick plays here. But uh, excellent pressure by rule on these punts. You're only allowed to rush three players. Both Ray and Tattersall are in there, and uh, Robbie Tattersall, again, showing off his versatility on special teams. Uh, he is really tough to block off the edge and uh, forced Donovan Brooks into a short punt. Tattersall, not a bad basketball player either. Uh, not at all. <laughs> uh, he was one of the most difficult guys to defend that I found in the state. Uh, our Archmere team uh, really had trouble with him. Uh, he's just a great pivot player. But it is... John, it's his energy level. He just never takes a playoff. He's just one of those players that cares and wants to compete all the time. I mean, he certainly gets that from his dad and his grandfather, but uh, he himself has a great self-motivation and a really fine athlete to either watch or get to coach, as I had the pleasure. He will take the snap here. He's got players flanked on both sides. Preston goes in motion. Tattersall is going to keep it, and he's tackled down there by number 51, Braden Hearn from Law, one of a handful of Laurel players will be moving up to Class 2 next year after winning two consecutive state championships under the new class system. This is going to bring, Tyler got back to the original line of scrimmage, so it's going to bring up a second and ten. More importantly, for Blue, the clock is running. We're approaching the seven-minute mark of the fourth quarter here of the 67th annual Blue Bowl All-Star football game. John Busby along with Bill Harmon here on the iHeart Networks and the live stream provided by DFRC. Tattersall with one player flanked on his left. Ball is going to go to him. That's Kwasin Benson. Benson picks up two before being tackled by a host of gold players. Well, the blue team's using the clock appropriately. They're going to let it run down. They watch, as you mentioned, since there's no play clock visible. They watch the back judge. As soon as he starts moving his hand, you get five seconds there to get the snap off. So the blue's done a good job of managing that goal here. Bottling up this run game would be important here. Hold on third down. Now, the Blues been really productive on third down. They've had a couple big plays moving the chains. Let's see what they can do here. Tattersall with Benson on his left hip. Tattersall is going to drop back to pass. He fires up the middle, overthrows his intended receiver. That was Lennox Preston from Conrad. That'll bring up a fourth down. Looks like Blue is going to send in the punting unit, which will include Tattersall staying on the field to make the punt. Well, certainly uh, Preston from Conrad has been the favorite target of both Chris Albera and Robbie Tattersall. He's had some great catches. That time, uh, terrific coverage there by the Gold Secondary. They've played a variety of coverages. They've played some man, some cover four, some cover two. So a little bit of that uh, change-up is done to confuse the quarterbacks. This is, that was a big stand for the Gold. So Tattersall back on his own 40-yard line. Gets the punt away, a low one. It's going to bounce. It kind of bounces. All his other punts bounced in his favor. That one did not. And it is down there by Jay Simmons from Mount Pleasant. And Gold will take over on their own 12-yard line. He's had a punt of 50, a punt of 45, a punt of 43, and one of 33. Uh, probably without uh, some small hang time, but uh, <laughs> he's been very good at angling it away, and uh, he's done a great job. Again, just another one of those roles that you throw these players into, John, not only in the regular season at Friends for the last two years, but here in the Blue Bowl game, and their special teams have been very solid. So Gold will take over on their own 17-yard line, first and 10, 6.04 to play. Did you know the first Blue Bowl game was played on August 25th, 1956? DFRC's founders, Bob Carpenter and Jim Williams, parents of children with intellectual disabilities, inspired the game. They wanted to host a fundraising event that spread awareness about intellectual disabilities while raising funds for programs that serve these children. And those of us in our generation, Bill, we know the Carpenters as Rui Carpenter, owner of the Phillies, and um, Pat Williams, owner of the Magic at one point. And so uh, quite an athletic family uh, both, uh, you know, I think one of the most significant things was that you had two prestigious people as a flag is thrown before Wright is able to get the snap off. You had two very well-respected people at a time when people with intellectual disabilities were not respected at all, almost shunned. And there you get two people uh, that were just such significant people here in the state of Delaware uh, who 
came out and readily admitted that they had children with disabilities and then set this program up, which has, you know, has spoken for itself over 67 years. Well, I had the great privilege and pleasure of knowing Willie Carpenter personally. Unfortunately, he passed away in the last year. He's a gigantic loss. He was an icon, as you mentioned, the owner of the Phillies, a great family man, a, a dear friend of mine, and uh, he will be remembered for many, many things. But uh, certainly this game will go down uh, certainly as, as a big one. Pat Williams, a graduate of Tower Hill, as yep. a matter of fact, yep. and then went on to have a great career. In that first game, a gentleman by the name of Charlie Cox Ran for over 200 yards wow. on 10 carries. <laughs> oh, jeez. And at the time, for a number of years, he, w he went to Wilmington High School. <laughs> and for many years, it w was the uh, record that uh, finally eclipsed. But, boy, uh, what a great player he was back then. And uh, great uh, great speed in Wilmington High, as we all know, is no longer. It's now Wilmington Charter. It's morphed into that. But a great history of some fine players from Wilmington High School. And first and 15 right over through Crisilla. Now second and 15 hands the ball off to Kai Rivera from Lake Forest. He picks up maybe a yard. Looks like they're going to give him two. That's going to bring up a third down and 13. So Crisilla was open. Isaiah Love was on the coverage but had to backpedal quickly. If the pass had been completed, it would have been a race to the end zone. But all for naught at this point. And it looks like... Uh, somebody's taking a timeout. We'll tell you who it is. It's going to be the goal team. Take a timeout. We'll take it with them. 21-6, 539 to play. We need gold. Time to play. Blue, uh, Gold's got the ball on their own 14 yard line, third and 13. And Bill, uh, you know, you, if they were at the 50, this would be two down territory, no, no matter what. But I don't think you go for it at this point. But no, maybe but not. remember it's an all star game. Yeah. I think uh, they, may, they might throw caution to the wind yep. because the way the Blue has run the clock here. I think there's a good chance that they might only get the ball back one other time. So yeah. they've got to find a way to create possessions for themselves. We'll see just a couple of plays ago, Crisilla was wide open on the left side, although I'm sure Jody Russell has made sure that that's not going to happen again. But it will be interesting to see. Crisilla has just popped in to talk to Brian Wright during a little. I have a feeling they'll roll some coverage Crisilla's way. He's set yeah. up into the far boundary by himself, trips the field. Marquis Ellerby looks like he's going to cut off the short route if it happens, but I agree with you, Bill. He may also run the long route with Crisilla. Well, he's going to need at least uh, 13 and a half yards here to get the first. Getting ready to be back under action here. Not sure what that delay was all about, but snap is back. Right drops back. He's coming to the right side away from Crisilla, and he's got his man wide open. Catch is made by Amir Jenkins. Tackle made by Damian Wright, but... Gold got exactly what they needed to give themselves any chance of pulling up a come-from-behind victory here. First down on the blue 47-yard line. What a terrific throw by Brian Wright from Smyrna. He stood in the pocket. He kind of looked off the safety and then came back to the outside and threw an absolute strike. Big first down. Blue rushing guys on and off the field. Tried to hit Crisilla over the middle. Gold wants pass interference. Not going to be called. Would have been a first down. In on the play there was Anthony Sidbury from Mount Pleasant. Going to bring up a second down 
for gold. Wright's got some interesting arm angles. That ball literally came off almost sidearm. He's trying to fit that through the rush, and he's got to be very careful there because that low release might result in a tip ball and an interception. Blue defense has been scurrying around in the last two plays. A quick out there to Michael Pearson, and he runs it up to the 45-yard line, tackled there by number 54, Tristan Wingo from William Penn. And that's going to bring up a third down in about eight yards. So this, I think, Bill, is definitely two-down territory. Oh, absolutely. And also on that last play, we've called his name several times today, uh, Jeff McNulty from Concord. He's also done a really nice job from that inside linebacker positioning, position helping on a number of tackles. So third and eight, right pump fakes being chased out of bounds. Wright pulls up, throws it out of bounds. So it's going to bring up a fourth down. Pass was sent Seth McGrody's way from Red Lion, but it was thrown out of bounds. So even if he had made a great catch, it wouldn't have counted. So fourth down for gold. A huge play for the offense. Could be a big play for the defense. And we got flags that have just been thrown on the other side by the two officials. Um, as a Newark player was running out of bounds and has been kind of told to get head to the bench by head coach little, Cody Russell. A little bit of uh, maybe some taunting over on yep. the far side uh, against uh, Crisella, who's been terrific for the goal. I'm not sure I will taunt him, but yeah. on the last play, uh, I talked about this matchup earlier on, the uh, left tackle. Tom Gibbs from uh, Cape Henlope and has had the assignment against Nate Ray throughout the night. And a really good battle. Uh, Gibbs did a great job there with his feet, uh, working on a spin move against uh, Ray, who worked to the inside. And that kind of freed up uh, Lorenzo Gales, who we've talked about several times tonight. Uh, he's done a nice job of pursuing the quarterback. So uh, a bad penalty for the Blue. I'm pretty sure I know who was it was against, but I'm not going to say it because I'm not 100% sure who it was against. But it was a bad penalty. It has given Gold new life as they have an automatic first down. And my guess is that will be the last we will see that player who the penalty was against, uh, which is the way it should be in a game like this. And so Wright has going to be given another opportunity here to try to punch the score in here and then see what they can do. 442 to play, 21-6 lead, blue over gold. And another whistle from the side. I don't know if blue is taking a timeout. Nobody knows. Yes, it is. So blue is going to take a timeout. We've got one more to take, so we'll go ahead and take it. Blue leads gold, 21-6. We'll be back for the end right after this. Too far, maybe not five, maybe three for Priscilla. Going to bring up a second down. Gold given new life after an unsportsmanlike penalty against the blue team. Gave Gold a first down on the blue 30-yard line. They were getting ready to have to hit a long fourth and long. Instead, were gifted that first down by the unsportsmanlike penalty. 21 to 6, 434 to play. Blue leads Gold in a game that has uh, been an interesting one and a fun one to watch, Bill. Yes, it has. I mean, some really good plays to talk about, some big plays made by both teams, some huge third down plays, good special teams. This Crisella really ran a nice double move there, and it was just overthrown. He had 
the secondary has basically rolled coverage to him, and he found himself wide open, just slightly overthrown. Three wide receivers to the right. Priscilla comes in as the lone wide receiver to the left, come in and says something to right as Gold moves left to right as we see it. Priscilla got a good jump of confusion in the backfield, but Wright makes a great play to Rivera. Rivera breaks a couple of tackles, but is finally brought down by Lennox Preston of Conrad to prevent what would have been a touchdown, but it is going to give Gold a first down on the 16-yard line. What a heads-up play by the quarterback, Brian Wright. It was going to be a draw play, but it was they were entangled on the wrong side, so he drops back, and then has the sensibility to drop the ball off quickly. So a terrific play. Blue scampers off before they get caught for too many men on the field. Wright with a quick out, finds his man, makes a move. That's Seth McGrory tackled out of bounds by Dominic Pietlick of Tower Hill. Gonna be, it's either gonna be a first down or just shy of a first down, waiting for the signal here by the referees. And it is gonna be a first down, first and goal from the six for the gold. Wright continues to get the ball out very quickly. McGordy is a terrific receiver from Red Lion. Really runs nice patterns. Very physical with his finishes. Two wide receivers on each side. Rivera on Wright's right hip. Now going in motion. Resets on his left side. Right back looking to the end zone. Finds Priscilla. The catch is made, but he's out of bounds. So a great pass, a great catch, but about a yard out of bounds out of the back of the end zone, and Blue hangs on for now, second down and six. Anthony Sibre was in the coverage, and he ought to feel very fortunate. Wright released that from a low level, and the ball just floated on him a little bit, and that's what happens when you release it like that, but a really accurate pass over the middle. Priscilla running a deep dig pattern right at the back part of the end zone, just out of bounds. Well, it's 5 for 9 for 74 yards on this drive. Wow. Gold's moving left to right. The short side of the field is on the right hash mark, which is where the ball is lined up. Two wide receivers on each side. Rivera on right's left hip, shouting out some instruction, moving some guys around on the left. Priscilla is the short route on the right side. Wright's looking that way. Priscilla moves to the end zone, comes back for the ball, tries to catch it. Incomplete. In on defense there was Damian Wright from Newark on a great play. Well, Wright did a nice job of buying some time. His protection broke down. He slowly rolls to the right, trying to get his receivers back, and that's what you call almost a scramble drill. If you're long, you come back. If you're short, you go down. And if you're across the field, you're trying to get back into the quarterback's face. And uh, just good defense there by the blue team, but a good job by Wright of extending the play. Priscilla was down. The referee stopped the clock. Athletic trainer ran halfway toward him onto the field, which means that he now has to come out. Fortunately, Priscilla is fine. He hopped up and was heading back to the huddle, but a nice heads up by the referee by rule. Because the clock was stopped, Priscilla has to leave the game. 347 to play. 21 to 6. Blue leads gold. Gold has it. Third and goal on the six-yard line. Right in shotgun position with Kai Rivera on his left hip, two wide receivers on the left, one on the right, and one in the right slot position. That is Michael Pearson from Middletown. Right drops back, he gets flushed out of the pocket, scampers through, and this one's up for grabs, and now there's a flag down. It's intercepted by Cadrell Barrett from Howard. And we will see there's a flag on the play Referees are getting together here. Bill, any thoughts? I No, I was watching the pass rush, so uh, I was impressed with the blocking initially on Ray, but Robbie Tattersall came off the edge and got in Wright's face, which forced the errant throw. And Gold is saying it's against Blue, and all indications by the movement of both teams, that is, it's going to be a pass interference against Blue. So Gold will live to play another down at least. And the ball was badly overthrown. That's why I did not sense that it might have been interference. And so they'll repeat third down, this time from the three-yard line. So we have third and goal. Not much time clicked off the clock. 3.38 still to play. Rivera still in the backfield on Wright's right hip. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. 
Wright's going to roll to the right and toss it, and it's short. Did they catch it? It is. Touchdown. Touchdown is to Seth McGrarty. Defender was Damian Wright, but a, sh a perfectly thrown pass, a little bit short. McGrarty was able to come back, and I say perfectly pass, a little bit short because it had to be for McGrarty to be able to come back and get it. Now, the referees are getting together. The ref that made the call actually had his the bat. He was away from seeing whether that ball could have been scooped or not. And Blue is making their case that it was a short hop, and somebody convinced somebody that it was a touchdown. <laughs> well, I agree. The official was, uh, was basically, he could not see whether it was trapped or not. I thought McGordy did a great job, a great exit. Many times when you throw those goal line comebacks, you throw the ball low so it can't be intercepted, and you throw it to the outside, and I thought McGordy did a great job of coming back and getting his elbows and his palms underneath so the ball would not hit the ground. A really nice throw. I thought uh, that was a fantastic drive by Brian Wright, the quarterback from Smyrna, orchestrating that, and a fine finish by McGordy, who's really been impressive here with some great patterns under pressure. So it's 21 to 12. They're going to go for two with the same lineup they basically had on the last play, and it's basically the same yardage. Low snap, right picks it up, he rolls to his right, looking, looking, fires to McGrody again. This time it's picked off by Blue and picked off by Dominic Peatlock. And so the whistle blows and the two-point conversion no good in the 3.33 to play. It is 21 to 12, Blue over Gold. We're going to keep it right here. Bill, what are your thoughts? On the kick? What a, well, yes, for sure, but <laughs> let me get there. What a huge play because now it forces the goal no matter what if they do get the ball back for two, two possessions to score. So that was a huge play mathematically. Right. And uh, the right rolls out, and this is what he loves to do. He loves to roll to his right. Blue should try to probably pin him in, but he surveys the field, and then he's just fitting in. In high school, we have to remember, there's no negative for throwing an interception or an extra point. You can't score on an extra point. So uh, that was the second interception by Martin of the day. Really nice play. and. Here, again, I don't know how many opportunities the goal had to try on sides and how many times the blue had a chance for hands, but they've got a 5-5-1, five, five, a one, and I'm sure by rule now it's changed in recent years. You can only overload six players, not any more than that in high school. They did that for safety reasons. Probably a good rule. Yeah. And uh, all of the five and the five and the one are either single-digit or low-digit numbers, which means you've got all your, your, all your hands teams in. There's no linemen. So the impressive field. that these uh, two coaching staffs have had enough time to work on that uh, with such a short practice window. Now, what you always have to be careful about when they overload one side and they have a tight bunch to the backside, you've got to be sure you don't overcommit. Priscilla kicks it may not go 10 yards, it does not. Jumping on the ball is Anthony Sidbury from Mount Pleasant. So Blue will take over on the gold, looks like they're going to mark it on the gold 47-yard line with 3.31 to play. They probably need to pick up one, maybe two first downs. The timeout situation a little uncertain in uh, these all-star games. I would think the gold team has one timeout remaining, but you're right. Uh, the Blue will utilize the clock most importantly here. You want to stress ball security. If you're tied up, go down. Make sure you don't try to squirm for extra yardage or spin and expose the ball and stay in bounds at all costs. Just remember, we're going to have a post-game show after this one is over. We'll recap this game. If we have uh, privy to who some of the award winners are that they give out, we'll certainly share that. We'll talk a little bit about next season. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back for the pre-game show after this one ends. But still 3.31 to go. Blue with the ball. Tattersall takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps it himself. Moves out to the right, avoids one tackle, and then eventually taken down. There's going to be a flag in as a, a head-first tackle, a spearing call, I think is what's going to be called here against the gold team. Well, the game has gotten just a hair chippy here in yeah. the last uh, quarter, which is a little unfortunate. The personal foul by the blue, giving the gold an opportunity to score, and then this kind of penalty. I mean, and what you want to do is let's just end up the game. The final score is really not the important point. You certainly don't want to get anybody injured. You want the game to end up on a fun note. So instead of a loss of about 14 yards, that personal foul penalty against the gold is going to give 
blew a first down and four to go from the gold 40-yard line. So uh, not only a foolish penalty, but a very costly penalty for a gold team that would have loved to have put blue in that second and very long situation. Absolutely. Robbie Tattersall did the right thing, though. He knew he could not get any other yardage, even though he'd lost some. He just went down, and fortunately, the recipient of uh, not getting hope, but also getting the penalty. A nice spin move by Benson. Bounces off a couple, works his way up. He's right at the first down marker. They're going to stop the clock with 2.57 to play, and that means it is a first down, so they'll move the chains. And as soon as the chains are set, that clock will continue to roll. Well, Benson has great ball security because he runs low to the ground. He's going to double up. Even though he spun there when he came out of the spin, he had great uh, ball security, and that's what you want here. You just want to... Try to get some positive yardage, but don't ever take an opportunity to expose the ball. Don't be reaching the ball. Keep two hands on the ball because the defense here will come in with a tackle and then everybody else is coming in to try to strip. And Tattersall runs up. He's going to be under center. First time we've seen a quarterback under center for either team. We'll see if he's... Good news he is he has his own center there, Phil Crock. <laughs> So no, uh, no troubles there. He hands it off to T.J. Martin from St. Mark's, who scampers around the left side, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. And Gold is going to take a timeout. We'll keep it right here. We're going to stop the clock, try to get the ball back at least one more time. But as Bill pointed out, they really need the ball back two more times. And that's at least Gold's second time out of, the, of this half, possibly their third. Um, DFRC's ability to organize fundraising events and promote understanding of individuals with intellectual disabilities depends on the skills, commitment, and leadership of dedicated volunteers. Raising and distributing the funds involves a network of over 20 committees and 300 core volunteers. To find out how you can help, visit dfrc.org slash volunteer. And again, we want to thank Johnson and Lamb for donating all of the uniforms, the cheer uniforms, the coaches apparel, the hats. Uh, it's a company owned by DFRC Blue Gold alumni Matt Greenberg and Billy Cannon. Greenberg is the current assistant coach at Mount Pleasant. Just a wonderful thing that they do. Also, thank to the other sponsors, Ambrogi Foods, NKS Distributors, and New Car, which if you buy a car from New Car in the month of June, they will donate $100 to DFRC. Second down and 10. Patterson flips it back to Benson. Benson makes a move to the left, comes back to the right, taken down on the far side by Ryan Mejia. And that will bring up a third and four, 2.07 to play. Gold not calling timeout, so they must be out of them. And it's safe to say, Bill, if they are able to pick up this first down here, we can start talking about next year's DFRC Blue Bowl football game. Dora Wright uh, from Newark did a really nice job there of blocking as the lead blocker in front of that uh, outside run play. You mentioned Billy Cannon, uh, esteemed longtime baseball coach at Tower Hill. And uh, uh, we, the game of baseball misses Billy, but I know he's moved on to another career, and uh, we wish him the very best of luck, but a really terrific coach and gentleman. Tyler Saul hands it to Benson. He jumps over the defender. He was at the first down, I thought, but they're not going to give him that as he hopped back, and he ended up being taken down, and Gold is, does have one more timeout, and they are going to take it. It's going to be fourth down and two. I would assume Blue is going to go for it at this point. I would see no reason to not, and uh, certainly with Benson, who's averaged over seven yards a carry, he'd certainly be a good one to uh, use here, but watch for the quarterback option. Uh, Tattersall under center, they can lead to Benson, and then he might pull it if they sense the defensive end is closing down. If Tattersall can get his feet to the line of scrimmage, he can just fall forward and pick up the first down. Young man, uh, how tall is he now, Bill? He's 6'5". He is 6'5". And I tell you, I saw, you know, I was telling you before the game, I've watched him on film. I've seen him from press boxes. I've seen him on TV from home. I've never seen him side by side. And I didn't think it was him. He looked so big when I was down there. I just did not think it was him. Uh, but just an impressive young man um, in, in all facets of his life, not just on the football field. Going well, to Yale, as you mentioned, uh, he gave a speech on the last day of school, uh, which was very memorable. So he has a, a lot of talents. His parents, uh, Shannon and Rob Tattersall, very proud of him. And he's got a younger brother, Ryan, who's actually taller than he is now. Ryan's oh, almost 6'6", six, six, and will probably be friends as quarterback and safety again uh, this season, so uh, the Tattersalls are growing them big over there in their household. 
offsides. Uh, that was number 80, Anthony Holloway, who jumped a little too soon, so it's going to cost Blue five yards. It's still going to be fourth down. It's going to be fourth down and seven now instead of fourth down and two. And that Tattersall brother is only going to be a junior, right? So he's got two more that years. That is correct. correct. And here's an interesting twist. We've got Robbie Tattersall and Chris Albero in the game at the same time. <laughs> I was waiting for this. Jody Russell told me beginning of the week he might do this. <laughs> And it's not because Tyrosol is holding for Alboa to kick. No, uh, Alboa is the tailback, and uh, yeah. Tyrosol is the quarterback underneath. And goal hopped offside, so that's going to take it back to a second and five. So the gold player that was chirping at the blue player for being offsides just got chirped back out a little bit. <laughs> what goes around comes around. Is that called football karma, guys? <laughs> The guys Bill is referring to are Corey Silverweed and O.C. Chukwocha, who have donated their time tonight to be with us and kept the stats. As good as Bill is, he's not coming up with those stats uh, out of his own head while he's yeah. making all the great commentary. These guys are making me look <laughs> way better than I am, I'm telling you. I've learned a lot from these two guys over the years. Pleasure to coach them both. Two success stories, no doubt. All right, fourth and two. Same lineup with Tattersall under center. And I'll borrow the back of the two people in the backfield. They're trying to get Gold to jump off sides is what they're trying to do. And Russell looks like he leaned over and is going to take a timeout. So trying to stretch the game out a little bit here. <laughs> Fortunately, they're giving everybody their money's worth. Well, we talked about if they had a lightning delay, would they finish the game? I think we're at the point where lightning would be okay. We don't want it, certainly. But at this point, with 125 left to go, we're at that. Point. Did you know that you can give the DFRC through your United Way Charitable Campaign as well as the Delaware State Employee Charitable Campaign? Your gifts to DFRC are tax deductible as allowed by law. DFRC is a nonprofit organization under Section 501c3. Visit DFRC.org to donate. Again, this is the 67th annual DFRC Blue Gold All-Star Football Game. It's good to be back in full action, and by that I mean not only back playing the game, which they didn't do uh, a few years ago because of COVID, but also back with the week-long camp and getting the true experience. This is an organization that raised more than $50,000 in 2022 and distributed it to nine charitable organizations, all who benefit people with intellectual disabilities in some way. All right, back again. Dajour White is lined up between the quarterback Tattersall and the fullback, at least in position for Albaro, and he's dropped back. He caught the flip, and now he's thrown to the end zone, and the ball's tipped and out of bounds, so incomplete. So it's going to be a turnover on down. So you got the trick play you wanted there, Bill. Well, kind of. They were uh, targeting Hudson Zawakis, who's also going to FNM, and I would say, Quick toss to Chris Albero. He rolled out. It looked pretty much like a halfback pass right away. Very good coverage down the field, but uh, I believe that's the first and only time Hudson has been targeted. He's a terrific receiver, played both ways for friends, had an excellent career, as I mentioned, going to FNM. He's also a basketball player as well, and he has a very bright future. A good route runner at 6'6". He's got long strides. He catches the ball in traffic, and he's going to have Chris Albero, who he had an opportunity to work with quite a bit this spring to get him set up for a great career up there. So Gold's going to have the ball with a minute 17 left to play. They're going to start on their own 29-yard line. They trail 21-17. They would need to score twice, so it's got to be, this can't be a long drive. It's got to be a quick hit and then see what they can do with an onside kick to get the ball back immediately. And they're going to hand the ball off to Kyle C. Wilson who barrels out to the left. He's kept in bounds, which is key because the gold is out of timeout, so the clock will continue to run. Well, that's a great point, and Wilson, who's a really fine runner, also plays basketball going to Delaware Valley, which has a terrific program. As a defender in this case, you always want to kind of be guarding the sideline and not allow that runner to get out of bounds. That's a huge uh, play where you run off 20 or 25 seconds. And so dropping back is Brooks. He's being chased, trying to elude one tackle. He does. Now he's scampering over to the right side. He's got the ball in the left hand. And he gets knocked out of bounds. So the clock will stop. And late, there's going to be a late hit there. Flags are thrown. Coaches are separating the blue and the gold. Blue is backing away. And so that was a late hit that will be penalized 15 yards. And we'll see 
if anybody gets more than just a flag here. Well, John, that was Donovan Brooks at his best. He evades a sack. He's able to roll out. He still keeps his eyes down the field looking for a receiver. Once he crossed the line of scrimmage, of course, he becomes a runner. And he did a great job of extending the play, making two or three different moves. Uh, he had a wonderful career for John Wilson at St. George's. And talk about a program. Uh, John Wilson has really done a fabulous job down there now. Not only is the football coach, but he's the athletic director, still does some teaching in the classroom. He wears a lot of hats, but he's got that program really upticking. They've got a great turnout down there. His roster grows every year, and that's a fantastic program that uh, John should be very proud of after many years as the head coach at St. Mark's. Yeah, it's been fun to see them become successful, and John is one of the people, though, when you reach out to him, he gets back to you right away. Oh, John is one of those <laughs> detail-oriented and sensitive people in the game. Brooks throws it deep, and it's going to be out of bounds. Intended for, I think that was number 11, Khalif Spencer from Lake Forest, if I'm seeing the number correctly. Kind of been showing off that arm. He also plays center field, as we mentioned. He's going to Newman up in, uh, just in Chichester to play baseball. He's a center fielder who has great speed. Devastating on the bases. Uh, he had a great career for Jeff Rogers, a very fine baseball coach at St. George's, so a terrific athlete who's a great competitor, but I'll tell you what, he is so dangerous in the run game in football and when he got on base for St. George's. 34 seconds left. Brooks drops back, looking left, being chased, almost tackled, avoids that one, and now knocked out of bounds by Damian Wright from Newark, a nice clean hit, but not until Brooks picked up the first down, so game's not over yet, clock stopped, 26 seconds to go. O'Donovan did a great job of keeping his eyes up, avoiding tackles in the backfield, and then he gets out in the open spaces, and he can really run. And so a first down for Gold. They trail by nine, so they would need to score, and whether they get an extra point or not, it wouldn't matter, because they would need to score again. And so we'll see here what Brooks does. Got two wide receivers out on each side. He drops back, he whips it out, and that ball is tipped, and it looks like that was tipped by Nate Ray. We've called that name a few times today, Bill. Oh, he's been terrific. I'm just a big fan of Nate Ray. He's actually battled a small lower body injury throughout the week. Uh, a terrific performer. Does a great job of pressing the tackle upfield, and then when he senses the quarterback's getting ready to release the ball, he gets one or both hands up and got the tip. Uh, there to obviously knock the ball down. He's going to Delaware, and I think uh, Coach Ryan Cardi is going to really have himself a great player. It's great to see some local talent yep. going to the University of Delaware. Actually, the fine kicker, James Collins, uh, from Salesiana, will also be kicking at Delaware this coming fall. Ray, the defensive player of the year, he played basketball in the state championship team and the track state championship team, so quite an athlete. Brooks finds Priscilla, and a very nice tackle there by Damian Wright, not only to bring Priscilla down, but keep him in bounds. As you can see, Priscilla was trying to battle out of that tackle to get out of bounds. And that's going to probably do it with five seconds to play here. Gold is not going to get another play off. So a jubilant blue sideline and a disappointed gold sideline, but they certainly have a lot to be proud of as both coaches are getting their teams lined up for the handshake. Blue beats gold 21 to 12. Blue extends its series lead to 34 wins against 30 for the gold team. There have been three ties. Blue has now won two in a row as we watch the players handshake there. Uh, Bill, your quick thoughts before we go to break and come back for the pregame show on tonight's game. Well, a really fun game. Uh, both sides competed very hard. I thought with a very short week, this is the shortest week in history, that both teams did some really good things. Uh, special teams, I thought, were pretty darn good for, again, a limited practice period. Some outstanding play by the Blue being able to run the ball. Benson was a big factor. Tattersall and Albero making big plays offensively. I thought the goal team really hung in there. They competed well for Coach Brian Timpson, but ultimately the Blue was just a little bit better here, and their defense, I thought, was very solid throughout. Benson, Martin, and Preston score for the Blue, and for the gold, it was Caden Shockley on a 23-yard touchdown run. Blue wins 21-12. to We'll be back with a post-game show right after this. You're listening to the broadcast of the FRC Blue Gold All-Star Game. And the, uh, 